<laughs> all right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, first, we welcome. We have many Muslims in the chat, and they are very, very upset. And this is a good sign to leave Islam because you, you get upset now. Later, you will leave Islam as many did before. Uh, we start with Mr. Peace, uh, who said uh, that Allah is, uh, you know, like they conquer nations. We Muslims, we conquer empires. You conquer nothing, my friend. You conquer yourself because you are the victim of your conquer. Secondly, your God Allah could not protect His Kaaba from Al Qurmuti. Al Qurmuti, he destroyed the Kaaba and he stood in the middle of the Kaaba saying, Allah, where are you? Hmm? Where are you? The God of the flying birds who send rocks. Where is your rocks? And he killed more than 10,000 ISIS fighter and destroyed the Kaaba, the cube of the pagan. And then he took the black stone. And then Allah could not get it back until the Muslim they bribed the man and they gave him a lot of money. Your Kaaba destroyed many times, not only once. And now we are the one who protected from Al Houthi. Uh, a piece he said, uh, Al Houthi is shooting uh, missiles, not at Mecca. <laughs> Look like you don't know where the Mecca is. Well, obviously, you are not watching the news. Oh, I forgot you are a Muslim. You do not know how to read, how to write. Do you see it? التحالف يعترض صاروخ باليستيا أطلقه الحوثيين باتجاه مكة. and those and those weapon are what they are American weapon and the wax is what is American weapon and 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 the American army doing what in Saudi Arabia to protect you Allah cannot. so you are proud about nothing a little nation is called Israel they are not even five six millions scaring the hell of you. You are proud about what? I have no idea. And let us now not to waste our time with this garbage. Your God could not protect the Kaaba. I understand he is taking a nap. Maybe he's taking a nap. But even why he have a Kaaba? Let us question this Kaaba. You Muslim, you claim that you are not pagan. But everything says that you are pagan. You kiss a black stone, which is nothing but the shape of a vagina of a woman. Allah, he chose the Kaaba to be in the worst location in Mecca. And in order to save this issue, you contacted the American engineering so they can stop the flood coming to the Kaaba, bringing all the sewage. For 1400 years, the God of Islam could not stop the flood which come to the Kaaba every year and cover it with the poo, poo of people of Mecca. This is a fact, my friend. So if your God Allah is the one who chose the location of the Kaaba, and you are talking about the location of the Kaaba, here we go. This is the location of the Kaaba. It's swimming with the sewage. Your Kaaba is a swimming inside the sewage. Now you tell me what kind of God he chose his house, his holy house. This is not the bathroom, supposedly. This is his holy house to be in the sewage. I know you what you will tell me. You will tell me Allah, he likes sewage. I got that. And I agree, obviously. How this is the house of Allah? The peacemaker answer, guys, 99% of those who are following you are a Christian. Who care? 99, 100. Aren't you Muslim yourself? What's wrong with you? Or maybe you are a Christian too. Why you don't answer? Here we go. I'm not going to ask you anything. What kind of God he chose the Kaaba to be in a place is going to be flooded by the sewage every year? Those who follow me are 450. Okay, well, you see, uh, according to your prophet, he have for 13 years, he have only 70 followers. 
you just you just spank your profit and by the way i have tens of thousands those are the one watching life you donkey but you just get your profit busted and you spank him with five fingers and now you left five fingers in the bomb you for a profit you're a prophet all the years. In, in, he did not pass the 70 people, including his wives, which there are many, and his slaves. And those slaves, they are being forced to believe in him because they are his slaves. So which one is better, the 450 watching me live or the 70 after many, many years and nobody want to believe in him? Now answer about the Kaaba. Who is a Muslim when I answer us? What kind of God? I mean, do your God Allah knew that the location of the Kaaba is horrible? Isn't it obvious that this God is a fraud and this Kaaba is a pagan house? And you can see that the Kaaba in this picture is collapsing to the left side because of the flood, if you notice. The Kaaba, by the way, destroyed many times, sometimes by the flood, sometimes by, by rain, sometimes by, by a human, and Muhammad could not, the God of Muhammad could not save it. My friend, the guys, the water is a pure. No, it's not a pure because everybody knows that in Mecca there is no sewage. People they have septic tank and it's open. So when the water come, all the poop will float because now there is nothing to stop it from coming out. All the boobs, all the poop, all the piss will float with the water. Any Muslim have an answer? كما قيل في الشعر أسد أسد علي وفي الحروب نعامة يا رجل قل هذا الكلام لمحمد حينما أتاه بدوي وقال له أعطني هذه الحميرة أعطني من هذه ها إبها لي فقال له محمد ولكنها أم المؤمنين <تصفيق> وحينما ذهب الرجل قال قالت له عائشة من هذا يقول لك هذا الكلام فقال أحمق مطاع <تصفيق> imagine guys a man he came to Muhammad and he asked him to sleep with his wife and Muhammad he did not say shame on you I am the prophet of Allah I'm going to kill you because at that time he was weak like a potato the coward he said um, but uh, she is uh, the mother of the believers hmm? and the man he turned his head and he left and then Aisha she was surprised about the behavior of her husband the hero the coward so she said how this man he can say such a thing to you he said he is a fool we have to obey which means if he insists to take you he will take you do you see how brave your prophet is Hmm? Now we will open our uh, sky for Muslims, and the topic is what is the proof that Allah is God? <clears throat> Only Muslims can call. And if there is someone he wanna call me, he wanna play that he is a Muslim. Shame on you! We don't allow that. Only Muslim can call us. We don't do what Muslims do. Any Muslim? Hmm. Who is a Muslim on a call?
how Allah is God, yet he chose his Kaaba in the wrong location. And you know what? Let us Allah, he was not aware that the Kaaba is going to be flooded. Can't Allah, he say, as Muslim they claim, say B is going to be, and here is the Kaaba location? Anyone? Can't Allah raise the location of the Kaaba by saying, okay, raise. Okay, the Kaaba is uh, uh, flooded. Okay, oh, you know, I will show you a miracle. Okay, I will raise it. Can't he do that? أول مرة أشوف شخص يقول أتصل بي وأنا لس guys please he's saying uh, this is the first time I see somebody saying call me and I, I am the one who will ask. I did not say I will ask you. I said the topic is how Allah can be God. This is the topic. I did not ask you anything. Now call me and tell me. I don't, I'm, I'm not asking you anything. I'm listening. And but it's very funny by the way. The first time somebody says to me, call and I will ask you. You must then you do nothing, but you say, I will ask you. Have you ever heard of a Muslim? Have a program and he is the one is answering anything. You Muslim don't answer. You have no answer for anything. The one who is calling me and you have, you don't have a, if you are using a Muslim name, I will take your call. If you are not using a Muslim name, I will not take your call because I said this is time for Muslims. If you are a Muslim and using a Christian name, well, shame on you. And you are being foolish because I will not take your call anyway. So if you want to call me, you have to be Muslim, real Muslim, not fake. If you are a Christian and you are making your fake Muslim name and I will hang up on you. I will ask you a very simple question to prove that you are a Muslim. Who is a Muslim and a call us? Abu, they will call you where? What, you, why you don't call me, Abu? How I'm going to fight you? I have tens of, tens of thousands of people in my Skype. Just type Abu and I will call you, right? Who is a Muhammadan is willing to call me? How we can prove that Allah is God? Is that because his Kaaba is flooded by Pupu? Uh, peace, you called me before? I don't remember. Call me again, no problem. Here we go, guys. He, peace, he's saying he called me before. But please call me and speak English. And don't use the Arabic text in the chat. This is an English chat, please. Let everybody see what you are saying. Who is a brave Muslim? He have the courage. A Kaaba flooded by Pupu. And then who will save the Kaaba from the Pupu? The American. And by the way, don't take me wrong. I am not upset because the Kaaba is covered by Pupu. I am upset because the Pupu is covered by the Kaaba. This is a pagan, filthy cult practice. Kissing stones, going around the stones, believing that there is a God for this stone. Any Muslim? Well, my my phone is on. I mean, my Skype is on. Sorry, and yet Muslims are not calling. Where where is the Muslims? Hello? Look how simple it is and look how hard it is. You know, where is the miracle of the Quran? Scientific miracle of the Quran. Prophet Muhammad, he made miracles. Okay, Muhammad cannot read and rise his Kaaba. 
What about Muhammad saying to the Muslims, let us get some stones, huh? And uh, uh, you know, put a lot of dust and and, uh, and and dirt in that location and raise the Kaaba. Even that simple thing he cannot do. He keep the Kaaba as it is, and every year the poopoo -poo cover it. And now when the poopoo -poo, the flood go, what we will do? We will spend the day and the week and the month after cleaning the Kaaba from the poopoo. -poo. What about the smell? Actually, according to the hadith, dogs used to come and do poo poo and piss inside the, the, the mosque of Muhammad. You believe it? And Muhammad never bothered. How that can be true? Maybe Christian Prince is lying. Maybe. Here we go. Sahihu al-Bukhari. Well, let me speak like the Iranian Shia. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad and the dogs used to come and urinate and pass through the mosque of Muhammad and we never less we never use the spring water on the urine of the dog this is the house of Allah The house where you Muslim you go crying to see the Prophet. <laughs> this is what the dogs used to be. And Muhammad he don't bother even to sprinkle water over the poopoo -poo of dogs. This is a miracle by itself. I mean I have to admit this is a miracle. How this is cannot be a miracle, you tell me. Hmm? Any Muslim have explanation? How dogs get inside the, 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 the holy mosque of the Prophet? This is not any mosque. And the dog, he lift his leg up. Like imagine, close your eyes, close your eyes. And the dog like, and his eyes like, is blinking like he's like, yeah, finally I did it in the holy house of Allah. Man, finally, okay. And the Prophet and the Muslims are watching and nobody even clean anything? And you are telling me Muhammad he don't have miracles? This is a miracle. It's a miracle to see the dogs come into the house. You see Jesus, Jesus, he did flip the tables on the Jews for buying and selling in the yard not in the temple far away if you go if you go and study how the temple of the jews is you will see that there is many yards far away from the temple yeah jesus he was so upset for they are dying so buying and selling he said you made the house of my father a place a market a bazaar for buying and selling muhammad dogs getting inside the house of his god pissing and walking by marking the territory of Allah oh somebody calling me you are a coward the Christian Prince let us see this guy hello 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 so you don't want to answer okay Potato. And the funny he is saying, I am a coward. But he called me, he did not even dare to open his mouth and to speak. And he hung up. <clears throat> Anyone? Yeah, this is Al Bukhari, brother. This is Al Bukhari. Book number four, hadith number 40. 
I like number 40 because number 40 stuck with Muhammad. Muhammad and the 40 thief, Alibaba. Isn't it obvious that Muhammad is a prophet of God and he cares really for the house of God? And the funny he said that the mushrikeen are najis. What? The mushrikeen are najis. What does that mean? Anyone is not a Muslim, he's a filthy dirty. Actually, one of the Muslims, before we start the chat, just to show you how ra filthy races this cult, they believe that if you are not a Muslim, you are an animal. Yes, brother. And this is a verse from the Quran. And this guy, he was quoting the verse from the Quran. Let me show you what he said in the, in the chat, in the same chat of today. This is... Uh, let me get it where it is. I think maybe this one. Let us see. No, not this one. Maybe this one. All right. This filthy cult, which is white supremacist cult, and this is the post of Muslim he posts for us, Muslim Night. Where are you, Muslim Night? You became a, a cat when I uh, go, out, go, go live on air? Do you see it? Do you see how filthy the cult is? This is Quran. He is not saying his own. This is Quran. Quran is saying that those who they are not Muslims, who don't believe in Allah, are worst animals. Uh, this is their translation when they say beside Allah. Yeah. Any Muhammadan? So what is... Okay, if there's no Muslim will call, I will, hang, I, will, I will close my Skype and continue my topic and what I can do. Any Muslim want to call me? Okay, let me, let me make it uh, nicer for you. You call me and you ask me to ask you the question you like about Islam. I mean, how easy I can I make it? You are the one who would design the questions for the exam. Hey, Abu, how I can call you, my friend? Why you don't call me? You keep saying, call me, call me, call, call me, baby. You remind me of Muhammad. When Muhammad suddenly he changed the name of his God and he started saying Ar Rahman. So the Arab they said to him, Who is Ar Rahman? Yeah, Muhammad now have two gods. Before all the time he was saying Allah, and now he say Ar Rahman. The only Rahman we know is Rahman al Yamama. The guy who his name is Rahman, he called his God Rahman. Muhammad he liked the name of the God of the other guy, he stole it, he put it in his book. And then he made a verse in the Quran says, you call Allah Ar-Rahman, you call him Allah, it doesn't matter for all good names belong to Allah. <laughs> so look, let, let me tell you something about the story here. The guy, he sent a letter to Muhammad saying, in the name of Ar-Rahman, Muhammad, he like it. He answered back saying, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. <laughs> and this is in the Quran. This is not, a, I'm not, I'm not making things up. You know, Allah, the Allah, all the good names belong to him. What a thief. What all names belong to him. What is the name of Allah? Suddenly you, you, you are adding names to Allah. Let us see.
just to show you the stupidity of this cult. He repeat the same, and by the way, one of the things is uh, about Islam, Muhammad, he had nothing to say, but he repeat the same thing, like chapter 7, verse 180, the same as chapter 17, 110. But chapter 17, 110 is telling us a story exactly. Say, you call upon Allah, or you call upon Rahman, by whatever name ye call upon him. For him belong the most beautiful names. <laughs> <laughs> which means there is not a single time Muhammad at that time until then he have a verse saying Ar-Rahman let us see maybe we have a Muslim here hello meow oh, this is a cat oh. Christian prince he make Muslim cats Alhamdulillah a Muslim man he is a Muslim who believe in Allah he called me and he said meow did you hear it May Allah meow you. I mean, that's fantastic. Huh? You did refute everything I said. You, he just said meow. He did not say ow. Oh, 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 because we mentioned that the dog he was pissing. Listen, the Muslims don't like dogs. The dogs are dirty, brother. He said meow. But that's, that's so strong. That's so powerful. So this guy is trying to call me like crazy to say to me meow. Okay. Mm, you come go to a catty. This is the lion in the chat. He became a cat when he called me. It's a miracle. Hmm. Any Muslim have an answer? How, how Allah never told Muhammad yet, according to this story, that his name is Ar-Rahman and yet Muhammad he come with the name of Ar-Rahman because as you see this was an answer this is the first time Muhammad he used the name Ar-Rahman and he never received a verse from Allah saying to call him Rahman so it was Muhammad fabrication Muhammad fabrication Ar-Rahman and then uh, Muhammad is ready he go home because people are questioning why you are saying Ar-Rahman the Rahman is the name of this guy, the, the fake prophet. Why are you are saying Rahman? So Muhammad now he have to come with solution. Uh, see Muhammad, you call him a Rahman, you call him a Christian prince, you call him Meow. It doesn't matter. All good names belong to Allah. <laughs> Unbelievable! I love it. It's it must be God. This is this is from God. This is from God, the Prophet, he fabricate names, and then Allah, he agree with the Prophet about the name, which Muhammad, he stole from somebody else. Who wants some tea? I'm drinking tea. Anyone? You want some tea? Nobody want tea? Uh, because of Corona, I got you, I got you, I got you. Quran here, the Quran in front of us. It's a Quran, here, the Quran. Quran of Muhammad. How many will leave Islam today after watching this video? I'm not sure. Allah will send me a verse and he will tell me. Oh, hold on. About how many? You remind me of a, of a, of a story in the Quran. <clears throat> which will make you die laughing. I mean from respect. Prophet of Allah, he was telling us stories. And those stories, brother, nobody knows save Allah. So there was a problem about a story of Christian youth who they flee their homes because they've been discriminated. And then people, they are wondering how many they are. Some they say they are three. Some they say they are four, some they say they are five, but Allah, brother, He will correct the story. Read with me carefully, brother, and enjoy the wisdom of Allah. That's a clear wisdom. That's a lot of dumb plus whiz. Whiz, whiz. 
Some they say they wear a three and their dog is being number four. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, the start is garbage. How you count the dog as number four? I mean, in which language you count the dog as number four? You cannot say that. You can say they are a three and a dog with them. You cannot say a number four is the dog because the dog is not from their kind. Correct, guys? You cannot count a dog with the human. Then he continued his wisdom. Others, they say, they were five and their dog is number six. <laughs> <laughs> hold on but you, you did jump something now they should say they are four and their dog is number five because you just said they are three and their dog is number four you idiot so he jumped a number uh, maybe he's a Korean a Korean you know they don't like floor number four you go to Korea, you look in the elevator, you don't find, uh, I think in the, in the Philippines the same, I think uh, floor number 13, I, I forgot really. They have like fiction stories, you know. So, uh, what is the floor number four? There's no floor number four there. So Allah here looked like he have a problem with the floor number five. So, they, they, they were the three and their dog is the four. Okay, what is the five and their dog is six? No. And some of them, they say, uh, 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 they were uh, five and the, their dog is number six uh, okay uh, and uh, uh, doubtfully doubtfully okay and uh, other they say they were a group uh, are we going to spend the day saying what people say and other they say they were seven and their dog is number eight okay and what is the correct answer look at this the correct answer is, the correct number is, Allah knows best of their number. <laughs> so what is the number? Nobody knows. So what the point of this stupid story? A brother and sister. Some they say they are three and their dog is number four. And some they say they are four and their dog is number five. And some they say they are five and their dog is number six. And some they say they are six and their dog is number seven. And some they say they are seven and their dog is number eight. But the truth, brother, nobody knows the true number save Allah. I mean, what? That's a nuclear, my friend. That's that's a, that's that's somebody he just went to Mars and he did poopoo there. So what the point of this story now? Supposedly you are correcting them. What is the correction? My Lord knows best their number. Okay, what it is? <laughs> mm. I hate you, I hate you. How many of you here hate me? Be honest, how many of you hate me? <clears throat> I'm not talking to Muslims, the Christians, Christians. Because I'm making you gain weight from laughing. Huh? Be honest. And do you know that this story, all of it, is a story from a Christian Syrian priest? It's a fiction story written by a Christian priest. His name is Yaqub. And this story simply is a fiction to encourage the Christians. In the future, they were discriminated. So the story is, there's a, there's a bunch of youth who they flee for their life because they were discriminated for believing in Jesus. The king wanted to kill them. And then they went to a cave and then they wake up after a couple of hundred of years and they found that that king is gone and the whole kingdom became a Christian. But this is a fiction story. Muhammad, he took it and he claimed that the story is from Allah. And you can search the story in Google, the story of the seven sleepers. Actually, even some Christian believe it's true, but it's not true. This is a fiction story. <clears throat> hmm? You love me very, very much. 
okay I, 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 I hope you can say that when I need a, a, a dish of food yesterday I finished exhausted I don't know what to eat I don't even have eggs in the refrigerator the only thing I have is canned food unbelievable and you open TV and they are playing for you commercial of a shrimp here we go what we will do now shrimpy I ask Allah for a shrimp he, he sent me Muhammad and his uh, virgins what is this so now those guys Allah saying that they are holy men but I thought dogs are dirty and I thought the one who have a dog Allah will take it from his deeds so how come they have a dog with them and then brother the story continue so they stayed in their cave for 300 years and at nine about nine years Allah is not sure nine eight <laughs> see Allah knows best how long they stay so even this one he is not sure I mean look at this they stayed there 300 years and about nine but not sure maybe more maybe less huh? see Allah knows best how long they were staying why you don't tell us the number man what's wrong with you why this guy is stuck with Allah knows best you know what if I get married <clears throat> and uh, I want to go like hunting and my wife she questioned me where you been my husband for the last three days I would say Allah knows best where I've been that's it I mean wait, 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 wait. there's no to explain the investigation was over I got the best answer Allah knows best what do we want more from this I mean this is this is it so, so it's very wise Allah knows best their number the many years okay with him is the knowledge of the secret heaven and earth okay what what does have to do okay so what is the number guys with him is the, he have them all but he will not share them with us so what this purpose of this story he sees he find finally he he hear everything did you hear meow did you hear the guy who called me and said the meow saying shahada he hear everything are you sure hmm. any Muslim hmm when you are going to debate your Christians yeah yeah the coward even they are denying their religion so they call me and they claim to be Christians why because they are afraid I will ask him about Islam when you are going to debate Christians and why you want to debate Christians you idiot <laughs> hey Christian that is debate if Jesus is God or not do you agree that Jesus is God yes we agree okay I agree too okay but you know what let us uh, disagree for the sake of uh, debate huh? come to daddy he hear everything brother that's bad I try always to keep it muted so nobody hear it in the microphone it's not good to eat beans they have no protector other than him if 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 so the American in Saudi Arabia doing what the American in Qatar doing what the American in Turkey doing what when the Russian they hit and they killed more than 65 Turkish soldiers right away the Erdogan called the NATO America Trump the Russian Trump he said to him we stand with you okay but let him hit you more because <clears throat> you can handle it man your bum is big what happened 
when is Allah can protect them? The Kaaba was demolished by Al Qurmuti, and Allah did not send these birds, a flying bird who carries stones, and those stones are backed. I wonder why they are backed, man. Oh, because they want to make them hard. Can't he back? Can they carry stones from the ground? Why it have to be backed? Backed in the oven of Allah. And here Allah he make another poo poo. And uh, recite the teach. It doesn't say that. It says, What is inspired to you? And nobody can exchange the word of Allah. But how the Muslim then they say that Allah is sent the Torah and Allah sent the Injil and yet they, they are changed. He can make a different name. He don't have to call it the same name. I cannot find his name. I have tons of thousands of people. I don't know. If you look at my my Skype, my friend, you will get scared. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm thinking to change the Skype because there's too too many uh, too many names. If you are a Muslim. Feel free to call me. So no one can change his words. Okay, brother, how the Injil is changed then? Isn't it the word of Allah? They said, you know, Allah, he mean here the Quran only. If, 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 if. So the Injil is not his words. Yes, it's his word, but he don't mean it. Have you ever heard of a corrupt, false cult more than this? Either nobody can change his words, all his words, or you can say, he, you cannot change only this word for that to prove the foolishness of the God of Islam because the word of God is equal to each other and the promise is nobody can change his words hmm. <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? Hello? So what uh, what we learn from this story now? What this story is about? Anyone anybody knows what this story is about? And by the way, the cave story is one of the most, uh, I mean, the chapter of the cave is the best chapter to show the world that Islam is a stupid cult. If you, if you continue, the whole chapter, by the way, it's about fiction stories. The whole chapter. Nothing there but fiction. The story of bowing down to Adam. Which is amazing. The story of Moses looking for a prophet, Mr. Green. Why Mr. Green was called Mr. Green? He is not coming from a Greenland, no. He is not wearing green. No. Because Mr. Green, prophet of Allah, he drank from the fountain of youth. By the way, guys, I have to share a secret with you. The reason I'm still young, still I'm, I'm, very, I'm very old actually, extremely old. But the reason I'm still young because I drank from the fountain of youth. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even with my very old age, I have no wrinkles in my face or in my neck. Why? The fountain of youth. It's true. There is a fountain of youth. You drink from it. Even if you are dead, you come back to life and you become so young. 
Check what Zuko what you can do. You can now imagine how many women they are looking for this fountain. I just said wrinkles are gone. Like now women like searching fountain of youth where to buy its water. My friend, what's your to buy the water? Just uh, Amazon.com, like, hello? Sure, it's true story. The prophet, he mentioned it. What's wrong with you? I mean, show respect, man. Are you saying the prophet, he lied? Crazy people. I mean, why you, do, why you don't show respect? Here, let me show you the reference. Because you might say, forget, how many of you want to save this hadith before we move it? About uh, dogs. Uh, we have, uh, uh, okay, well, he's not a Muslim, but he's ex-Muslim. It's okay, I will take him. Hello? Hello? Hi, CP. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm all right. I just want to actually uh, make a comment. I say, I mean, uh, uh, what the Muslim going to say? I mean, they cannot challenge you because whatever you're saying is all true, you know? Mm. They have nothing to say, you know. You are just mentioning what is this true, what's happened. So the did, Muslim, did they you, have nothing to did, say. Did you hear about this you story, know? the fountain of youth, uh, Aras, before you leave Islam? Sorry? Did you hear about the fountain of youth before you leave Islam? Did you hear did I hear what? Did you hear about the story of the fountain of life before you leave Islam? Oh yes, I did I hear. Oh okay. This is the reason I left Islam. Because this this is a cult, you know. That's whatever you are saying. This is all true, you know. So they cannot say anything, you know. The the Muslim people actually, I, I just I don't know why they not live in this cult and they still stuck to this. You know, it's very weird. I mean, some people. But uh, they just don't you know, I I, I, I have family, I, their fear. I have to just agree with you. Fountain of life is exists is true. I watch myself the, the the movie, the Pirate of the Caribbean. It's there in the movie. Isn't it there? It is. It is there, my friend. It's, it's there. So obviously, uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is a true story, and Muhammad is not uh, making things up. You know, it's a, it's a true story. Uh, 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 the guy, uh, the guy in the part of the Caribbean, the actor, you notice there, like they are fighting with the sword, and the fountain of youth is next to them, and like boof, 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 you know, boof, and then the boof, boof. And then the fountain start opening the water and the water go all over and everybody became uh, uh, dumb. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Aras, for calling me. And Aras, See, uh, for those who don't know... The guy is called Ishtuan Abdullah. I think he did, he did text you all. I think he spoke to you as well. He is a Kurdish guy. He just like you, actually. He uh, making a video on YouTube and he speak to the Kurdish people, mostly for the Kurdish people, you know? Yeah, so, see, that guy has been six years Actually, he's been advertising a video, I mean, making a video regarding the Islam, just whatever you are saying, that's exactly the same, yeah. you know? So he's been studying the Islam for a very long time. He's expert like you, so nobody can challenge him because he knows every scene. So he's been advertising a video, especially the where I'm from, the uh, Kurdistan in Iraq, Iraqi region. It, we have almost 10,000 imams. I've been his video being sent to all every single imam. He try, he wanna challenge, he wanna debate with the all this imam. Nobody, nobody stand him. No, nobody come forward to to actually uh, debate with him because they have nothing. Whatever he's saying is all true, you know. So it's like a, it's useless, you know. Yeah. They're useless people. Yeah. They know. They know. They know. Well, uh, especially he say I wanna do the debate about Muhammad behavior and his character. So no any email come forward to say, okay, I am ready to actually challenge you about the Muhammad character and behavior, you know, his personality. So nobody can come forward so far. Yeah. Because they, they know Muhammad was a dirty cunt, he was a dirty cult, he was a kill, he was a rapist. So what they say, they have nothing to say. It's all been mentioned on the hadith. It's not you made it up or he made it up. It's all mentioned by the hadith. They mention it, not us. All right. Well, thank you, Aras, for calling. And let us give a chance for Muslims to call. Thank you for calling, my friend. No worries, no worries. God bless you, man. Thank you, God brother. bless you. Bye -bye. Thank care. you, man. Take care. So, uh, somebody saying in the chat that Fifi, he made uh, 200 videos for me. 
uh, uh, proving that I did lie 200 times. Uh, but he could not, he didn't dare to call me once. That is telling you that this is his lies. Because if you don't dare to call the person who is lying, I mean, if you don't dare to call the person who is lying, you will dare to call who? The one who is saying the truth? If you have 200 lies in your hand, in your pocket, why you don't call me and everybody will see life on air who is the liar? But because he is a potato. <laughs> and not only that, uh, he made a video saying, don't go to Christian Prince live streaming. And you are here. Here we go. You, you Muslims are keep coming. And he is coming, obviously, because in order to say or to claim that he is answering my lies, he have to watch my lies. But yet the coward, he said like a potato in the chat, he don't dare to call me. Here we go, my Skype is open. You remind me of uh, 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 Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab, he said to the Muslim, do you want me to debate Christian Prince? The Muslim, they said, yes, please, brother. He have a huge impact in the Muslim community, brother. So supposedly we will have a debate. We call, he play video. Ta -da -dum, ta -da -dum. Uh, he play video. Okay, now, did you say that? Hang up on him. Can I hang up on him, the bastard? Coward. Coward, son of Muta. He didn't dare to debate me. He did not let me talk. He did not even let me say anything. Did you say to this woman, suckle me? I was reading your stupid prophet hadith, you idiot. He hang up on me. He started calling me name. Let me answer. No. Yet he want to claim that he can debate a Christian prince. You, you cannot. Fifi, he said, I will fly. I will fly to America to debate you. What is it about? Obviously, is it is an excuse and you are a coward. Because you do not need to fly to America. You can call me in Skype. Secondly, everybody knows I don't go. I do what my work from my home. Everybody know that. You are not an exception. You will fly to America. Fly to America. Potato. Now, do you see, guys, how the will of Allah who was dead. He came in touch with the water of life. And then, and then water called Ma'ul Hayat. Ma'ul Hayat, this is a cartoon I used to watch when I was a kid. The fountain of life. Water of life will be pure on them. And they will spring out like the seed of a spring. How Allah or raise people from death by the fountain of love. Do you see it? This is how Allah will do resurrection. Now the fountain of life is exist many times. Is it like something in heaven? No, it's an earth. Actually, it is in Bahrain. If we go to the hadith, so this hadith here, let me show you the this is al-Bukhari. I will post the link about the fountain of life which Allah will use to bring people to resurrection. Allah will use magic. Who reboot her? Hmm? How to get my books in the UK? My friend just ordered from Amazon. Amazon. Here the story of the fountain of youth appear again. Allah sent Musa, Moshe, to learn from a prophet, his name is Al-Khudr, who have a great knowledge. Musa is just a little tiny student next to him. Al-Khudr was called Al-Khudr because he drank from the fountain of youth, the fountain of life. Let us see the story where we say the fountain of life. Hold on. You see, I don't like to say things without proven reference. I mean, that would be silly, isn't it? Uh, where is the fountain of... Uh... Here we go. Brother. When Moshe, Moshe, oh, that, hold on. 
his name is not Musa, really. We have to make it like clearly clear. Like the guy who called me and he said meow, meow. He made it clear for us. He explained the Quran in just one word, meow. So brother, Moshe, Habibi Moshe, Habibi Moshe, he was going with Yeshua. And then with Yeshua, Habibi, when they arrived to the rock, which is in Bahrain, and next to the rock, there is a water of a spring. It's called the spring of life, brother. And then Moshe, he said to uh, his servant, Habibi servant, Habibi servant, bring us the fish so we can eat the servant. The servant, he went to find the, uh, the fish, the, the fish is gone, Habibi. So Moshe, he said to him, what's the fish? He said, oh, I think, Moshe, that when we sat next to the rock, the spring of life touched the fish, the, the whale. And the whale, Habibi, came back to life. <sighs> Muhammad is not a fairy tale storyteller. Read carefully. At the rock, at the rock. Oh, hold on, we cannot do this. What you want to do this like this? Are you serious? I mean, I don't know. I mean, we cannot just do it like this. This is need uh, some preparation, spiritual preparation. Spiritual what? Preparation. Brothers and sisters, get ready. At the rock. At the rock there was a water spring called Al Hayat. Al Hayah, Al Hayah, Al Hayah. Commercial break. If you like to get water to kill your wrinkles, if you are old or if you have suffering from aging issue, call our phone number one eight hundred Al Hayat Water right now. Don't miss the opportunity to kill all the wrinkles in your toes or your nose. This is a Lifetime opportunity, our supply is limited. Back to the story. Al Hayat. Al Hayat. Al Hayat. Al Hayat. Al Hayat. We continue tomorrow with a new series of Al Hayat movie. And please don't forget to subscribe to Netflix. For Netflix is the best movie place for the world where you can find the Fountain of Youth and the Caribbean. All the series exist for less than $18 a month. What the heck? That's so much, brother. We continue. Al Hayat. Hey brother, you said that Hayat yesterday. Al Hayat. Al Hayat. Al Hayat Al Hayat Al Hayat And none And none We go back to Al Hayat Al Hayat Commercial break if you like to eat falafel, we are Middle Easter. We are the best to make falafel. Al Hayat falafel is the best falafel ever in the Middle East. Just call us right now and get Al Hayat falafel with Al Hayat water. We'll make you young as Yangi. Uh, as Yankee, sorry. Uh, I think we have a Muslim calling. Hello? 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 Yes. Hello, good evening, CV. Good evening, my friend. Are you a Muslim? Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, hear me? I hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm very happy to be able to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I am Ai Kurniawan. Uh, you can call me Mr. I, Mr. E. Mm -hmm. I'm from Indonesia. I am one of your fans. 
But today I'm not sure if I'm still Muslim or agnostic or atheist. But on my ID card, I write an Islam. And on January 22, 2020, I perform pilgrimage Umrah. Okay. And my father name is Abdul Rahim. Hmm. So I can still be said to be an Abdul. Okay. I hope you don't mind chatting with me. No problem. So are you a Muslim right now? What are you? I'm trying to understand what is your situation now. So are you a Muslim? I don't know. I, I don't know myself. Uh, I don't know atheist or Muslim. I, I often watch your videos, so I'm not sure about Islam, but I'm not a Christian too. I I don't know. I I think I am an agnostic. I believe in God. So but okay, I don't believe but, but but tell me. Uh, Quran, I remember uh, lie on Quran. When the last you, time? As you tell me. When the last time you you said that you are a Muslim to yourself? When the last time this has happened that you are a Muslim? Before you became, uh, let us say, agnostic. Sorry, uh, your son is I mean, not. Yeah, I'm really saying I, when, I when, when, the, okay. when, when okay. the last time, when the last time, when the last time you the consider last yourself a Muslim, last time, like as a period of time, two months, three months ago. At this time, I am still a Muslim, but I don't do salat. Oh, so you are? I, you think you are a Muslim? Okay, so let let let, let us me and you try together. Uh, first, because I, 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 first, I, I, first, I, I, first I, I, before. I, I, before we continue, because sometime we want, like we want to be sure that we don't receive uh, phony callers, liars. Uh, can you say shahada? Of course. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. So he's a so he's a Muslim. That's I, wonderful. The pillar so, of Islam, hmm. uh, shahada, salat, jihad, uh, fasting, okay. umrah. I did umrah. Mm. But I don't kiss that black stone. Oh, no, you miss it, man. You miss it. It smells so good. Oh, why? Why you didn't kiss it? It smells so good. It's like it's coming from heaven. How come you didn't kiss it? I had some juice thing. Harus berdesak-desakan apa ya? It it risks my life. Cause there's many people want to kiss it. I don't want. Cause by waving hand, it's enough. Mm. But I I do a uh, seven time uh, cycling the Kaaba. Okay, but why? Other, but why you touch the? You, you said you said my friend that touching the black stone is enough. Enough for what? Not not touching. Just wave with my with my hand and saying Bismillah, ya Allah, Akbar. That's enough. Okay, saying, so enough yeah. for what? Enough for what? To accomplish enough, to yes, accomplish to, what? To erase my sin. Oh. The, so do you think really the, that? Do you think really that? Allah, okay. Do you think really my, touching touching a hand. stone? Okay. Do you think really touching a stone will erase your sin? Don't you think this is a pagan cult belief? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I'm saying I'm an agnostic or an atheist. Because yes, I am becoming dog with my religion, my Islam. So uh, what? I will try the, to respond to your topic today. It's about uh, Haidir and Moses who find Fontaine of Light. Hmm. May I? Sure, sure. But I want to ask you first, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. But is it Please. is it because you are watching my videos you became agnostic, which means you are a Muslim but not sure? Is that my videos or something else? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All because right. of it, uh, before yes, Mama, uh, I am not sure from I am age uh, high school maybe, uh, but Mama, I am not from a family that uh, Islam yang taat apa itu. Okay, so now you, so now you, 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 how old are you? If you don't mind to say, I am old enough. I am now forty. Okay, so you're an adult man. No problem. That's wonderful. So, uh, you are watching my video for a while, and that make you now have a doubt about Islam. And you said you went to Hajj or you do Umrah, and you go yes. around the Kaaba and you touch the black stone. And uh, now you want to share with us about the story of Moses and the, the, the fountain of youth. What do you yes. know about it? Go ahead. Uh, uh, I think it is a miracle. In the past, there's many miracles. Uh, from China, like, just like Jesus. Jesus can walk on the water. That's a miracle. Jesus can hmm. pure water becoming wine. That, that's a miracle. Hmm. I think in the past, there's many miracles. And today, there is no miracle because... I don't know why, because in Islam, okay. it's believed that God is a miracle, stop miracle, because people don't believe on miracle today. Yeah. That's on Islam. Yeah, but my friend, yes, maybe, but uh, my friend here, the story, there's no miracle. It's this is a fiction story about a water. If you drink from it, 
will bring you to life. This is why it's called Ma'ul Hayat. So your God, Allah, is restoring a story. You, you can go and search a story. It's called the story, of the, the legend of Al-Galgamish. This, those those uh, uh, old legions exist long before Islam. About a fountain of youth exists in the area of Al Bahrain. This is why here they mention, they mention Al Bahrain. And the Quran mentioned the Bahrain too. So Al Bahrain supposedly is a location where two seas meet, but uh, geography, this is false. There, there's no two seas meet. But because at that time they are limited in knowledge, so they see two seas from the two sides. So they call it Al Bahrain. And supposedly in that area, there is a magical fountain. Anyone he drink from it, he will come back to life. Which means if you have somebody, he's dead, not not uh, not alive. He's dead. You let the water touch even his face, he will come back to life. And actually, here we go. The hadith in front of us saying, at the rock there was water spring called al hayat, which means the life, and none come in touch with its water but became alive. Correct? It says that right. Yeah. Okay, so here there's yes. no miracle. This yes. is magic. This is magic because this is not Allah making this fountain. This is for everybody. It exists for everybody. Supposed to. none. It says none touch in it will come back to life. So it doesn't matter who you touch the fountain. Okay, but if in this case you are not making people believe in Allah, you are making people believe in fountain of you that this is God. This water may be God. There's some people actually enter now. They worship water. There's people who worship water, yes, they believe water is God. Muhammad was copy paste from Bahrain. He copied the story which is exists in the in Persia, exists in the uh, for the Sabian, exists for uh, 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 the, the east of uh, 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 of Syria. This is a story spread all over about a fountain of youth, and even you can find it in eastern in western uh, legions because this this story is spread all over. So now this is why we see it in the the, the movie. Which is not long time ago the part of the caribbean about many armies many uh, fighters fighting over what to find location of the fountain of youth yes what you put forward is logical makes sense yeah i have watched a lot of video that you made uh it look like you have thousand video but i have not found video that satisfy my question about god having a human form jesus is a he is a human form from a god is that right okay so what the, so you need you need me to explain to you how that can happen maybe i uh, yes yes I, I hope you can discuss this about this can you please sure maybe sure. at this time okay let, let time. us no problem uh, no 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 i'm here to help time. you my friend because you are still a muslim and for my for me i am here to serve people like you i'm your servant today all right I am your thank servant. You. Thank right. you very much. So, I'm very happy. Thank you. You yeah. are very kind. Before I start, I apologize if my English is not good. No, no, no. You are, well you are, you are fine. English is not my first I'm language just, too, so don't worry about it. This is it's as long we can I'm communicate. Just, uh, don't worry. As long we can communicate, things is good. So listen. I'm just an ordinary Abdul, not a Sheikh or not like you. You no see, master in many languages, memorize many verses of Quran, Old Testament, New Testament, the Hadith, and the other. You are a genius for me. My friend, I, uh, memorizing is not important. Understanding it what make us different because anyone parrot can memorize too. So listen to me. If we say God, okay. the second we say God, we say what? We say He's Almighty, correct? Correct. Okay, what Almighty mean? Almighty, he, he can do anything, but in my opinion, hmm. he can be have a human form because can you open a uh, surat Asura 42, surat 42, verse uh, 11? Okay, what about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but but you are sure that God has a human form, it's sure. Uh, when when you say yes, does this mean that human are shaped like God? Hmm. Well, this verse here, it's the verse saying that there's nothing like Allah, right? But this is a verse exists in the Bible too, where God saying there's the, the prophet saying nothing like God. But you see, when we say nothing like God, it's not about a look, because what is making God God is not the look. What make God God that He is Almighty, which means. There's nothing can. There's nothing impossible to God. That what make God God is not a look, right? 
I think it is impossible, God, to have a human form because okay. there will become a competitor in his shape. It's oh. illogical that Almighty One has a competitor in hmm. shape. Okay, you see, uh, a human being, they keep saying to God, okay, if there is God, why he don't show himself? So it is logical that God, he show himself, he humble himself, and he show himself. It is logical. When you say it's not logical, why? Uh, is that because that will ins be insult to, to Allah if he is God? Yes. Well, no, because yes, we because nothing can be an insult to God. I, I will give you an example. When the sun, the yes. sun, the light of the sun, go inside dirty water, that do the sun get dirty? The sun can can get dirty. Sun is big and no, no, no. The light of the sun. When the light of the sun go inside the water. Which one of them will make the other infected? The sun will make the dirty water clean, correct? Oh yes, it uh, becoming rain. It become cloud. No, the sun. Uh, when when the sun go inside, let's say there's some there's water have bacteria, germs, viruses. But when the sun come, everything will be burned, correct? Yes. So the sun, and it is just a sunlight, is not God. The sun will not be infected by the water of the sewage. It is the opposite. It is the sewage who will become a clean water because of the sun. So God is almighty. If sun can do that, and it's just one of the creation of God. How God, how about God who is the holy, who is everything about his, him is, is holiness. How anything can affect him, nothing can affect God. He is always holy. He is always pure. And now you said something very for me very important. Did your prophet say that Allah He have shape and He have a physical body? No. No. That is invisible. That is invisible. No one can see God. All right. God is eternal. Yes, no one. No one can see my God. So if God. I if I show you, you're a prophet saying that. What you what you will say? Uh, the hadith in front of me yeah i will show you there's many hadith you see i'm looking on screen all of them they are saying the same so if i show you that your prophet saying that allah he have shape and images and he even changes his shape what you will say you are a muslim sunni correct yes Indonesia okay. sunni. all yes. right this is sahih al-bukhari so they cannot say and lie to you says oh this is a weak hadith as usual al-bukhari Hadith number 7439, I'm showing it in the screen. If we go up, we will see Muhammad telling a story about people going to see God. To see who? God. See who? Allah. Okay. Can we see Allah? Muhammad, he said, yes. They asked him. Messenger of Allah. Shall we see our Lord in the day of resurrection? He said, do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun and the moon? When the sky is clear? We said, no. He said, so you will have no difficulty of seeing your Lord. So now we are talking about seeing Allah physically, not metaphorically, obviously. He compared him to the sun and the moon and how easy it's going to be to see him. Now how we will see him? If you go down in the story here, Muhammad, he said the following. Read carefully with me. Then the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw the first time does it say that you see the screen yes i see okay you said that allah cannot be in a shape because when you say he cannot be in a man you are talking about the shape of a man correct Sorry. okay but here allah is a change not only he have a shape he have many shape he, to the point he is a changing his shape and coming in a new shape so if the shape is a creation of Allah, how Allah is inside the shape which He's created? It speak about the end, the uh, what? Ahirat. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is not, this is not a topic. You see, the today or now or later, that going to change anything. Allah is taking a new shape. Obviously, correct. The timing is not really a big deal. I mean, in the, as long as He can do it in Judgment Day, it's mean He can do it now. 
and do it now yes. or do it later doesn't matter Allah is inside the shape this shape is created by who by Allah okay so Allah is inside his creation Then the Almighty will come to them in shape other than the one which they saw for sign. Hmm. Yes, it's, it's not logical. It's not logical. Hmm. Hadith, yeah. Well, if Allah... It if contradicts Allah, you with the Quran. No, 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 no. It doesn't contradict with the Quran. No, it doesn't contradict with the Quran. Why contradict with the Quran? You see, when the Quran says nothing is like Allah, uh, well, nothing like me too. Don't you know that every human being is different from every single there's seven billion human being nobody is like you is that correct yes okay so if this no, is the nothing, case nothing the, okay. the, the, the has no shape it uh, should be the, the almighty has not shape has no shape for almighty you have no what you have no what no no shape for, for god no one can see god yes this this hadith same it contradicts you with the quran Quran mm. say God okay. is invisible. God has no shape. God is no, no, no. Uh, you see, no, 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 no. Let me let me share with you some knowledge so you can wake up with me and you can see things in a better way. Do you know the story of Moses when Allah appeared to Moses as a fire? Yes. Okay. Uh, as, a, as a fire, but but the fire is not God. The, fi the, the fire is who? Okay. So, who? so what is the fire then? Is the fire is not God? What is the fire? Because it is fire. It's a mediator. It, no. Uh, no, 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 no. Read, read carefully. It's mediator. God can speak directly to okay. human. Okay. No. God needs mediator okay. to speak. To okay. Him. You know what? I will go with you. Did Allah speak to Adam with the voice of a human? Not as a human, but the appearance as human. God cannot speak directly to human. That need a mediator. He spoke to Moses. Uh, he didn't. He spoke to him. To him, and then he said the, the voice came from the tree, and this and the voice says, "I am Allah." Allah said to Moses, "I am Allah." This is not somebody else speaking. This is not Jibreel. He said, "I am Allah." O Moses, O Moshe, verily I am Allah. Right. So Allah here is using a voice of a human being and the Quran confirmed that now I will go with your logic Allah is invisible Allah is not like anyone Allah is etc and then Allah he have a voice of a human being What do you think? What what is seen is an appearance of, from God, and this appearance is not God. My friend, but this is God. You see, does it say does it say I am Allah? He didn't say I am a voice from Allah. Yes. It says I am Allah. Yes. So the voice confirm it is identity. The voice saying because Musa did not see Allah. Correct? You are saying? Yes, okay, but so Allah. so who he is the one saying? Okay, but who is the one saying I am Allah? The voice. So in this scenario, the only Allah is the voice. Allah became a sound, and sound is energy and waves. I am Allah, the exalted, the might, the wise. So Moses he saw a fire. He came to the fire. He heard a voice from a tree, and the tree is burning. And then the voice says from the tree, from the holy ground, saying, I am Allah. So who, where, is, where was Allah? Allah is unlimited by time and space, is trying to communicate. By no, 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 you have to prove it, my friend. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a theory, here we go. It says, blessed is the one who is in the fire and the one who is around the fire. Who is in, inside the fire? The voice of Allah. Read carefully, verse number 8, chapter 27, verse number 8. Blessed are those in the fire, not those actually, the one in the fire and the one around the fire. 
doesn't say those it doesn't say singular or many it says bless the one in the fire and the ones are around the fire okay who is the voice speaking saying i am allah allah voice allah saying the voice saying i am allah so the one is inside the fire is allah if it's an angel that will be stupid because simply the angel should not say i am allah he should say i am an angel of allah but the voice said i am allah so the one is inside the fire is allah so now we have your god is inside the fire and fire is a creation of allah uh, are you the christian believe that inside the fire is allah uh, we would even what? No, yeah. we believe in what believe you, you believe that inside the fire allah I think Christianity believed that for me Allah for me my friend for me true. for me listen listen for me for us as a Christians we believe that God is capable of being as he wish as an example God he appear you know as a, like the Holy Spirit appear as a bird yes it mm -hmm. can it, it can come in, in, in any way he want for his Almighty God for us this is not a problem but for you here we have a lot of contradiction in the understanding of a cult which is contradicting itself and you yourself you just said this hadith contradict the Quran, right? Why? Because you have understanding right. that God should not be inside as a creation. But everything in Islam yes. saying it clearly that Allah is inside as a creation. And Muhammad so and Muhammad is uh, let us let us me and you come to an agreement. Who is the best to understand the nature of Allah? Me or you or Muhammad? I don't know. What do you mean? No, that, you, the answer should be Muhammad. Be, the answer should be Muhammad because he is the prophet who introduced Allah to you and to me, correct? Oh yes. Okay. So, Muhammad so if Muhammad say, so, so if Muhammad say this is statement and this is very authentic hadith, which means it's confirmed that he is the one who said that that Allah will come in a shape which he created. And he have more than one shape. Shape number one, now based on this story, shape number one and shape number two. So Muhammad is making it clear that Allah is inside his shape. There's other hadith where Muhammad, he said that Allah, he come down every third part of the night. Do you know the hadith? Mm, not yet. Maybe right. you can show me. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is a disaster. They cannot say it's weak. Hadith number 1145. All right. Book number 19, Hadith Sorry. number 26. It says, the messenger of Allah said, O oh, oh, our Lord, the blessed, the superior, comes every night down on the nearest heaven to us. When the last third of the night remains. Okay. Allah is coming down where in the lowest heaven how many heaven there is I forgot seven maybe seven okay seven heaven and Allah now is inside the seven heaven because he had to go through all of them to go down to the lowest one isn't it the heaven is the creation of Allah yes that's mean Allah is inside his creation That's why I say I become, I mean, agnostic. No, but, but you, no, but you called yourself, my friend. I no, you called yourself a Muslim. In Hadith, Quran. Yeah, but you said you are a Muslim still. You can't say I'm agnostic. A second ago, you said still you think you are a Muslim. So, Muslim, if you are a Muslim, you should believe in this. And, and this is obviously that this man, Muhammad, he is making up stories and he is very confused and he's confused, confusing you with, with, with him. So in one hand, he says yes. to you that Allah is not a, a, a man. But in the other hand, he said, no, Allah is a man. Actually, I can show you Muhammad saying it clearly that Allah is a man. Let me show you this hadith. Well, yeah. Show me, please. No problem. Here we go. And this is a Sahih hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. Do you see it says Sahih? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hadith number 4320. We go up. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, the Antichrist, between two bracket, 
that I am afraid that you might not understand that the Antichrist is short, hinted, woolly haired, one eyed and eye sightless, and neither protruding or deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. What Muhammad is worried about? He is worried that the Muslim they will think that false Messiah is Allah, correct? Correct. So he's comparing between what? Between a man and Allah. Why? Okay, so why the Muslim they will think that the guy who is a man they will think he is Allah? If 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 Muhammad teaching that Allah is no way will be a man. This hadith should be to be accurate more that if you if, if uh, uh, I'm afraid you will confuse between him and the real Messiah because remember al Masih al mean the false Messiah, correct? Okay, so he should compare between him and the Messiah, the real Messiah, not him and Allah. Because the guy is not claiming to be Allah, he's, he's calling himself a Messiah. You know what I mean? Maybe the Lord is not to God, maybe? No, 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 no. You see, if I am coming, I will, I will make it simple for you. If I am saying, okay, we have a president, his name is Donald Trump, somebody Muslim, he mentioned his name right now, he's angry from him. Let us say I am claiming to be Donald Trump. And then you want to advise me how to recognize the real Donald Trump from the fake Donald Trump. You compare between me and Donald Trump, correct? Correct. But here, the guy is saying he is the false Messiah. He is, he is not, he's saying he is the Messiah, but he's false. So he is not saying he's Allah. So why Muhammad is afraid? that the look of this man will look the same as Allah, unless Allah is a man. What the difference between the two? The first man and Allah, the false messiah and Allah, one eye only. Do you see it? One eye. He did not say that Allah is taller, no. He did not say Allah is shorter, no. He did not say that hair is different, no. He say only there's one thing different between them, the eye. is not an eye sightless. So one only difference between the man, the false messiah, and Allah, that is the eye. This is a clear acceptance from Muhammad, that the one who claimed to be the messiah, immediately he is claiming to be God. Otherwise, why Muhammad is worried that the Muslim, they will think that this is Allah. So here Muhammad, he get himself busted in two things. Claiming to be the Messiah is a claiming to be God. And God, he looked like the Messiah, but there is one difference between them, one eye. But the Messiah have a shape of a man. So Muhammad worry about you believing in him, the false Messiah as Allah, is invalid unless the hadith here is uh, stupid, mad, crazy made by a crazy man because why i want to think that he is allah if allah is not a man anyway i mean who care about the eye the guy is a guy you know what i mean do you know that uh isa al masih or jesus will come back to earth that killed dajjal exactly it's, so so that the jazz that the jazz my friend that the jazz is somebody in like uh, uh, he t he t he take the identity of jesus to deceive people correct the dajjal is this is why they call him masih the jazz because simply he is taking he is stealing the identity he claimed to be the messiah right the jazz yes he okay claimed so, yes to be okay. a Sufi, so he Sufi. claimed he claimed to be the real messiah so how in the world how uh, a muslim he will think that he is allah and the only difference between them is the look. And what is the difference? The one eye. So if Allah is not a man, this story here is stupid anyway, because, okay, he is, the guy is coming as a Messiah, as a man. So why I would think he is Allah, unless Allah is a man too? I think uh, the word Lord here is mean Imam Mahdi or the Messiah. No, 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 my friend, my friend, no, 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 you see? Uh, in Arabic, we don't say the word Rabbukum. This is the same word you can find it in the Quran. Al-Mahdi is not Rabbukum. Rabb in, Ar in, in Arabic is very clear. Rabb is God. This is an Aramaic Hebrew word. This is why they say Rabbi. This is why they are the teacher of God. 
Rabbi, Rabbukum. If I take the same word exactly, copy it and post it in the Quran, you will find that the word only come as God, never come as something else. Not like in English, you can find the same word like Lord come sometime for here something. No, in Arabic is that's it. Especially we are talking about comparing between this is a prophet. This is not uh, 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 you know uh, somebody speak about uh, the the Lord of the house or the Lord of the slaves or no. Ya ayyuhannas, tabudu rabbukum aladi khalaqakum. Do you see it? Chapter 2, verse number 2 to 1. Chapter 2, verse number 49. Rabbukum. Rabbukum. Here we go. The same all over the Quran, the same word repeated. So, here Allah is equal to a man by the look, and Muhammad is proving it to us. Now, you never heard Muslim saying, okay, but, 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 but this is the Muslim Sunni agreement. Sunni. my friend this is the Muslim Sunni believe you are Sunni all Sunni agree that Allah have a hand not only he have yes. a hand he have two hands and both of them in the right side correct yes okay do Allah right. do Allah have a foot yes <clears throat> okay. Four hand and foot I have an argument that the hand the hand of the God are different from the hand of the human the hand of God is ultimately perfect it's what? no physical form unlimited by space in no time. no no okay god let us prove let us right prove because the god doesn't have any weakness okay let us prove it no 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 Look, hold the on left hand in human my is friend. Really weaker than my, okay. the left the right hand all right my this friend means god is ultimately hmm. perfect okay my That's friend my what we say when we say when we make an argument we have to sponsor the argument with proofs and reference correct correct this is uh, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number seven th uh, three seven one. It says, the <coughs> the Prophet said, the people will be thrown into the hell fire, and they it will say, are there more? This the fire will say, are there more to come? Chapter five, verse number thirty. Till Allah puts His foot over it, and it will say, qati qati, which means supposedly enough, enough. So. Allah will put his foot. Is that metaphorical foot or this is a physical foot? God like are different from human like. The Doesn't matter. I'm, God I'm not asking you how it, man. my friend, I'm not asking you how it looked like. When it says he put his foot, he put his foot where? In the hellfire, is the hellfire is a physical place? I think in the judgment day, all are non-physical. Mm -hmm. In judgment day, they are non-physical. We are only spirit. Mm -hmm. There's no physical. My friend, isn't it the Quran says Allah will change your skin each time it's burned? What physical? What not physical? What are you talking about? Allah will change your skin to burn you more and more each time your skin is burned. He will change it for you. Supposedly, so you can be burned more, right? Yes, there is many unlogic in in hadith and Quran. Okay, so there is no so, logic. So, so now, so now, my, my friend. Is a. Oh, okay, so when you say there is no logic in the Quran, you are saying to me, well, uh, 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 there is Islam is is false. That's what you are saying because obviously Allah like. Even the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari says Allah will uncover his shank and this is exist in the Quran. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2940A. Allah, when uh, how the Muslim they will see Allah? Muhammad, he, may, he make it clear that he will cover that one day when the shank would be uncovered. Actually, the same hadith I showed you about Allah coming to them in, in, in his shape is the same hadith saying that Allah, when the Muslim they refused Allah, look what happened. Allah come to them in a shape, other than the one they saw first time, which is very weird to say. And then the Muslim they will say to him, "Oh, you are not Allah. Hmm? You are not Allah." Then Allah will come back to them in a shape which they agree with. So the Muslims. 
they refuse their own God Allah just because he changed his shape so Muslims are following shape they are not following God if the shape is like this we accept you if the shape is like that we don't accept you so when we go and read we will find the following and let me put this the, the hadith for you uh, because this hadith has exists many places this is very very strong hadith you know it's not uh, uh, it's not like uh, one time okay let us see I mean look how many hadith to the point it's hard to find it like hold on give me a second <clears throat> always my friend remember that when you speak about logic you should not speak about Islam Islam nothing in Islam is logical is it logical that God because you became a Muslim he will give you endless penis is it logical he will give you a lot of women for sex is it logical that the wife her ass is one mile is it logical yes, that that's why I don't believe in yeah in so so, so, so in Islam, the second the second you you mention logic you are just out of Islam Actually, the word logic is not Islamic. It is kuffar teaching. So you are practicing kuffar right now. Read carefully with me. Allah will come to them in a shape other than they knew and they will say, I am your Lord. Okay, what they will say? They will say, we seek refuge with Allah from you. So the Muslim will do. They will reject Allah. For what reason? Because he changed his shape. Let me put it for you on the screen. Correct. What yes. happened? This is this is this is Allah. This is not Isa. This is not Musa. This is not Muhammad. This is the same God of Islam, Allah. He just changed his shape. Muslim, they say to him, get lost. What is this telling us that Islam is stupid? Because how we will know the shape of Allah? That this is not the shape of Allah unless you saw Allah uh, first time. When when they saw Allah first time. You know what I mean? In order to know that this is not Allah and to make decision by the shape where you should have a scenery, an image, a picture of the real Allah so we can compare. Correct? Yes, it's correct. So the story is just stupid, and Muhammad here is, is is making a fabrication, getting him busted. And look what he said. Then Allah, nobody will talk to him but the Prophet. They are examining him now. The Prophet, they are testing him. Who is this guy? And then Allah will come to them in a shape which they recognize him. Read carefully. And when our Lord come to us, we will recognize him. Okay. They say to him, "We will not follow you to Allah." Why? And not only that, they say to him, we seek refuge with Allah from you, which means they call him, you are the devil, you are Satan. The Quran says you seek refuge by Allah from Satan, correct? Yes. So when you say when you say to Allah, we seek refuge to, with Allah from you, that means you Muslims accusing Allah to be Satan just because he changed his shape. And that is alone should make you go to hell because you just call Allah Shaitan. So this is alone is deserved to... Uh, send you to hell and then we need to ask ourselves a question very simple question what is the point of this hide and seek story why Allah changed in his shape coming in the shape of Santa Claus and then he said to them I am Allah and then the Muslim they will say you are not Allah and then Allah he go back to his bedroom and then he changed his shape and he come back to them and then they worship Allah I mean what this story is about what is the benefit of this story I don't know. You tell me. Well, the benefit is that Muhammad is a fool. He make up stories. And now he is saying to us that there is two Allah. Because if the shape of Allah is Allah, and now we have two shape, that means there is two Allah. Because either we have, let me let me try to, to make it simple for you. 
Uh, okay, let us see here. <clears throat> I will draw something for you so you can understand me. I'm not good in drawing, don't take me wrong. But uh, it, it just to, it, it, it just to help, you know. <laughs> I'm not an artist, or I'm not, uh, yeah. But it's uh, just a way to make it simple it's funny, for it's true. <laughs> for for many people. All right. I'm just trying to find an empty space here. Okay. And here we go. So look with me here. Allah, He come in a shape. It doesn't matter what the shape I would draw. I'm not trying to insult. I'm just trying to make it a shape, whatever. So let's say Allah came as uh, a circle. Forget about the shape of a man. Hmm? Circle. Or he came as a, whatever, you know, a, a, tri a triangle, whatever you want. And then Allah, he went after the Muslim, they saw him. They said to him, we seek refuge by Allah from you. They say to him, you are Satan. I Arabic. You are Shaitan. Why? Because Allah, he come to them in this shape. Then Allah, he go back to his bedroom. And he come in different shape. The Muslims, when they see the shape, they say to him, no doubt, you are Allah. What we learn from this, that it doesn't matter who is Allah, the matter is the shape. Because the first circle, it was Allah anyway, correct? Okay, so what it changed exactly? Nothing except the shape. So Muhammadan, and you are one of them, you don't follow Allah unless he have a certain shape you like. So when Allah, he come to you in the circle shape, you say to him, get lost. I'm not going to follow you. I follow, not the circle. I follow the square. When Allah he come back to you in the shape you approve, then you agree to follow him and to worship him. And this is exactly what Muslims and Muhammad is teaching Muslims to do to Jesus. They don't like the shape of Jesus. They want a shape. They want a God to fit in a shape they like. Even if God himself is God, Still, they will reject him, and I'm, show, I'm showing you the proof of from Islam, not from my Bible. So, Jesus, he come to us in the shape of a man. God, in humble himself, he came in the flesh of a man. So, what we say, we say, it's going to be God, because we don't approve this shape. If the Messiah, if we change here, if we change here the, 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 the position, between Allah and the Messiah, you would do exactly the same. So the one here is coming as a circle is Allah. And then Allah is coming as a square. It's the same Allah. Nothing changed. What it changes is the appearance. So Islam is teaching us that we can judge only Allah by appearance. Christianity is totally the opposite. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And that goes to him. How we know the Messiah? If the Messiah come today, the Messiah says he will come in the judgment day. How we will know that this is the Messiah? Very simple. The Messiah, he would do what the Messiah can do. There's a guy, his name is Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He claimed, he claimed to be the Messiah. He came in, in, uh, in India, right? So yes. he claimed to be the Messiah. Yeah, he claimed to be the Messiah. And then in the morning, he, he, he found like 200 people who cannot walk, blind people, <laughs> in the front of his house. He said, okay, if you are the Messiah, here we go. Do what the Messiah do. 
He closed his door and he, he went to his bedroom and he, he did not want to see anyone. <laughs> you know, so because he cannot do what the Messiah can do. So the Messiah, he do not need a shape to prove who is he. Otherwise, I can say I'm the Messiah. You can say you are the Messiah. Anyone can do that. But the Messiah, he had many qualifications. Number one, he's holy. So if you are a person who is have a superpower, let us say, for sake of argument, but yet you are not holy, obviously you are not the Messiah. His yeah. his holiness, his ethic, his teaching, his amazing, his not only his power, all of those things will lead us to know the Messiah. In Islam, no, it doesn't matter the circle is Allah or not, it's not Allah, just because it's circle. It doesn't matter the qualification, the quality, just because he is a square, we accept him as, as Allah. And that is telling me that Muhammad is a very shallow man and he is a stupid. Because he did not teach us about how is God. You notice that he compared between the false Messiah and the real Messiah with a different one eye. I mean, how in the world that you can be true? How in the world somebody claiming to be a prophet of God, he says to us, the way you recognize your God that he is not one eye. That is the most stupid argument ever a human being he can come with. I have a good news for you. Allah is not one eye. Okay, thank you very much. Here we go. Now we can find Allah. We look for somebody have two eyes. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of a of a madness like this? This is how we will know Allah. And the false Messiah now he have one eye, but he, he, he can wear sunglasses. He can make a surgery. Actually, according to Muhammad, the false Messiah, he can cut a human being two pieces and then he put him together. So the one who can put a human being together, make him alive again, he cannot fix his eye. <laughs> so what do you think? Can we take Muhammad seriously as a prophet or this is a joke? Yes, I think it's just a joke. It's From a joke. beginning, when I was young, I at high school, I too complained about Islam uh, that Muhammad has for uh, 12, 13, yeah, 13 wives. Hmm. I don't like people who has many wives. I I prefer a um, Catholic. It's one wife until that do us apart. Hmm. It's like that. Yeah. I think Christian is more better in marriage. It is more, and I, I say, I almost say that I will leave Islam. If Islam is polygamy, or poly. Uh, when I was young, I say that. I don't know for today. Uh, and when we will talk, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm an agnostic now. Uh, my friend, and I still ask you another you, question. You said you said you said you are a Muslim, Muslim, so you so you are not agnostic. No, uh, no you are not agnostic because I asked you, do you believe in Muhammad? You said yes. I asked you, do you say Shahada? You say yes. So you are a Muslim. Agnostic is just a, you are hiding. You you know I, I'm not I'm not trying to insult you. You are hiding behind uh, the word agnostic. You know, but you did say many times that you are a Muslim. So why in the world you just said? that this is a joke islam is a joke so why in the world you are not announcing yourself right now that you are out of islam yes many many unlogic in islam yes like you say the god compared to dajjal to antichrist uh, and and you sure that the lord the word lord is allah is god and you are an arabic you know arabic uh, i don't know much about arabic and you sure that the word Lord is is Allah. It, it's not not logic. Uh, so uh, I decide uh, I'm not a Muslim anymore. Wonderful. So now I, I, you know, as long I'm happy for you that you left Islam. I am happy now to be your servant, extended servant for the rest of the day to help you to accept Jesus. Is that okay with you? That, that's, uh, that's hard for me to, to accept Jesus because I have many questions about Jesus. So uh, maybe from, uh, from wait a second, uh, I need Google Translate. Uh, I cannot speak English very well, so I, this, I need help from Google Translate.
Yeah, it, it, it is not easy for me to change my religion. Uh, I came from an Islamic family, even though it is, uh, I'm not a devout Muslim, but the vocationary teaching of Christian and Jew are, have been embedded from my childhood. Oh. Jew and Christian are like bad or evil. Right. And in majority Muslim country, when I move to other religion, I will be ostracized, discriminated. My brother, my parent will be disappointed. Even my family name can be destroyed. Even though the state of Indonesia has never been converting to other religion, but the social law can be more evil than the state. So it's hard for me. And, and in the other way, uh, I have another question about Christianity. Yeah, but before we go uh, there, be, before we go there, my friend, you just you just agree that Islam is an evil religion, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, because they will destroy your family, they will harm you just because you decide to leave Islam, right? So here we right. take we take advantage in, in this in this definition now, and to make a message for everybody that if Islam is from God, then Islam should teach godly behavior, and that does not exist in Islam. Now, what is your question about Christianity? Go ahead. Uh, number three. Uh, wait a second. So I need Google Translate. Oh, but I did not finish for you. I did not finish for you about uh, 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 God can be a, a human, right? Because uh, I, I want to finish this yes. uh, this idea for you. So, my friend, uh, if God cannot be human, He cannot be God. And I will make it simple. If I go to you to and let us say I am in front of God right now, and God He said to me, uh, "I'm coming to you as a human." The first thing I will refuse is that a human usually cannot be God because he cannot do what God do, correct? Yes. Okay, so what is my rejection? is not really for the look, but it is his ability. For we knew God by his ability. Okay, God is the creator. Can you create? If you can, you are God. If you cannot, you are a fraud. Right? Right. All books confirm that Jesus creator and Jesus he made miracle of a creation as an example when Jesus he gave eyes to the blind man who was born as a blind. That is a creation. That's that's not a surgery. Like I remember once a Muslim uh, uh, they have article saying uh, the reason that Jesus he have those amazing miracle but at his time the uh, medical was advanced. I mean what medical? Why Jesus was giving medicine? He gave the blind man a drop in his eyes, say, hey, take it three times. Jesus has spat on the mud. This is a symbolic for a creation. This is how God created Adam, correct? He mixed correct. water with dust. And then he put it in the eyes of the blind man, and the blind man he see. Yes. Jesus, he said to the, uh, uh, the person, uh, who is disabled, he cannot walk, who is born this way, uh, your sin is forgiven. The Jews in their mind, they start asking what kind of a person he can say that, how he can forgive sin. Do you think he's God? Because only God can forgive sin, right? Right. So then Jesus said to them, which one is easier to say to him? And look, he's reading their mind. They did not even say it by mouth. He, re he read their mind. Which one is easier to say your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk and the man carry his bed and walk? So when we speak about Jesus, we are not speaking about God or a man claiming to be God. We are talking about God being a man and he proved it. His holiness, for you know, if always uh, 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 there is there is two kind of power in this earth, evil or good. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. The power of good is the power of God. The power of evil is the power of Satan. Jesus, he challenged the Jews. Who of you can prove me a sinner? Nobody can do it. So when Jesus, he have the power, he is sponsoring this power by his holiness. So holiness proving that he is holy. Power proving that he is almighty. Wisdom proving to us that this is an amazing teacher, which is God, for no one, nobody can teach us better than God. And then the life of Jesus is proven that he is what he say. As an example, Jesus says, love your enemy. Do you think, don't you think that is this is amazing ethic? 
to teach people to love their enemy this is impossible right I mean we never heard of his in history somebody saying love your enemy that's way beyond man behavior man he seek revenge the Quran all of it teaching about revenge go and kill them and etc you know even people who did not harm you go and kill them so when Jesus says love your enemy he accomplished the love of God and earth and he did not ask for anything for himself he never asked for money he never asked for women all cult leaders they share the same thing they want your money and they want your woman so the life of Jesus even in the cross Jesus says forgive them father they do not know what they are doing here we notice that Jesus the Christ our Lord not only he is saying to Christians forgive love your enemy he did it even in the cross imagine my friend you are in the cross and there's people they are putting nails in your in, in your hands in your feet they are throwing rocks at you they are humiliating you they are making fun of you and what you what you are thinking about forgive them father they do not know what they are doing can we find better loving God than this God what do you think no. <laughs> yeah in in Islam there is uh, to in order to atone sin don't need to sacrifice from the sinless according to Surat al-Isra 15 uh, Surah 17 al-Isra uh, ayat verses 15 mm -hmm. So that's why I can receive Jesus because too many doctrine in in my brain that Christian is like this, like that. So it is okay. I still ask you a question. No problem. Sure. I, I, don't I, know. I told you, my friend. Today I am your servant. No, thank you. You are so kind. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, please open uh, Quran okay. Surah Seventeen. Yeah. Al Isra Fifteen. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just read the conclusion from that uh, ayat, from that surat, uh, that everyone is responsible for his action. And this ayat is ah, this. Okay, I can see. This is yeah. This conclusion: sin cannot be given to another. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What that the question? And I see Angel. I uh, see the Old Testament too. It's it's same like ayat that that Surat Al Isra. Hmm. Can you open? No problem. You don't need to open. I know what the Bible says, my friend. Oh, maybe, so, maybe you you can okay. you can uh, okay. uh, translate for me what what you you the right. uh, the lesson from these verses. Okay. Do you agree with me that my the conclusion is everyone is responsible for his action? Do you okay. agree with that? That I have that. I agree. The conclusion from this ayat. I agree. And who said to you that the Christians will not pay for their sin? Who said that to you? Uh, someone say that if no. we believe Jesus in no no you see in, the Bible is it clearly the Lord he said not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will which means not only you will be pay you for your sin you will go to hell you see we are not so, we are not hypocrite like Muhammad who you say Shahada and you go to heaven actually what you are saying is in Islam not in, in our belief because when we say that Jesus he paid for our sin that is about God forgiving our sin and then we repent this is not about that somebody else will pay for your sin and when we say that Jesus he paid for our sin it doesn't mean really that Jesus he, he made a payment it's mean that Jesus because he loves us he come to this earth and even though he knew that the Jews will kill him still he do come and this is why we say he pay for our sin for killing Jesus is sin insulting Jesus is sin stoning Jesus is sin crucifying Jesus is sin so because of sin he died 
so he paid for our sin which mean it's our sin and he have no guilt yet we killed him you understand It's like taking so, somebody, taking somebody to jail for a crime he did not do. So who is the one who did commit killing against Jesus? Is it uh, God? No, it is the man. So what you are saying to me, why they killed him? As if you are saying, oh, Jesus, he called the Jew. He says, Jews, come and kill me. I like you to kill me. No, that's not what happened. The Messiah, he knew that this is what happened. Still yet, because he loves us. He did not hesitate to give his life to pay for our sin. So the sin of a man killed him. But doesn't mean that Jesus is a practicing the opposite of what everyone we uh, believe that everyone shall pay for his sin. This is not what happened. Jesus, by his death and by his coming, he gave us the opportunity that our sin is there, still there. It's not gone. Even if God, he forgive you, your sin is still there. You commit your sin, the sin is going to be there. But because you believe in Jesus, you have opportunity to repent and to go to heaven. And this is what it means that he paid for our sin. Otherwise, our sin is there and we shall pay for it unless we repent and we go to heaven. And here they see the hypocrisy of, the, of, of Islam. Don't Muslims, they say that if you repent, you go to heaven? They say, Astaghfirullah, right? You know, Astaghfirullah is secret forgiveness from Allah. All right? Okay. So you go to heaven if you repent. But, well, Jesus, he is not saying if you don't repent, you go to heaven. He never said that. He never said, actually, go break all the command of God and go to heaven. He never said that. That's why he's saying, not everyone says to me, God, God will go to heaven, but the one who do my father will. And what my father will, don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal, don't lie. All the commandment. So if you break them, you don't go to heaven. So they give you wrong understanding. And now as long as you mention this, let me show you the hypocrisy of Muhammad and the hypocrisy of the cult of Islam. It is Islam who practice putting the sin of others on someone else. Read this hadith with me. Let me find it for you. <clears throat> According to Muhammad, that in the judgment day, Allah will take all the sin of Muslims and he will put it in the Christians. Do you see the hadith? Yes, I see it. Okay, it says here, there would come people among the Muslims on the day of resurrection, which with as heavy sins as mountains, not like it's not just normal sin, it's as mountains. And Allah would forgive them and he would place in their stead the Jews and the Christians. So the liar Muhammad, he says something in the morning in the Quran, he said the opposite in the hadith. Because you just said to me that a person should not pay for the sin of others. Correct? Correct. So how the Muslim commit sin and we pay for it? So this is a this is this this is that the, the filthy teaching of uh, Jesus did not say nowhere that G God he said in the Bible that I'm going to you sin go go have go have fun go uh, fornicate go kill go steal go lie and then don't worry I will take the sin you do and put it on the in the in the Hindus or in the Muslims that is Islam my friend. So look at the hypocrisy of those who teach Islam. They said to you that the Christian believe in that, but the fact Islam believe in that, not us. Right? Yes, it's correct. Okay. So what we will do now? What do you think? If there's anything you want me to, so, to ask me? Uh, so believing in Jesus die in the cross to redeem our sin is not enough to enter heaven. Absolutely not, because believing without being truthful, you see, when I say believing, what is that? What believing mean? Let us let us study the word believing. Believing alone, it can be 
a reason to go to heaven if your belief is true what does that mean okay i believe that uh, i believe in jesus but i'm going to sell drugs obviously i'm not a believer correct okay i believe that in jesus but i'm going to do prostitution well obviously i'm not a believer because jesus says if you do such a thing you will go to hell so if you believe in jesus you will give the fruit of jesus so your belief will save you but if you believe is it truthful only and how we knew it's truthful jesus said from their fruits you shall know them so a true believer have a fruit it's not the fruit will save you it's your belief but at the end of the day you have a fruit and those of fruits will prove who you are so one day when you stand in front of the lord the messiah in the judgment day he will say okay your name is a christian prince oh you claim to be a christian oh you have a cross in your neck that's wonderful okay and you believe that i'm god you say yes sir my lord yes i believe in you that's god and then he says to me well if you are believing on me as god why you don't do what i told you to do Go to hell. Or he will say, Well, your name is a Christian prince, and you did what I told you to do. Go to heaven. So, not only you believe, you know, you believe and you prove it. Otherwise, the Bible says, Faith without fruits is a dead faith, which means it's fake. Imagine you have a person in front of your door dying from hunger. And you have faith, praying to God, God feed him, God feed him, you know, I'm a good Christian. No, good Christian, he do what Christ did. You help the person and pray to God to help him too. If you don't do that, you are a fake Christian. So your faith can, can save you if it's a true faith. And true faith is the one come with the fruits. So when we say we are saved by Jesus, this is true. Why? We believe in him and he granted us heaven if we believe. But the true belief we are talking about, not a fake fraud belief. For someone who he say he is a believer, but he act as the devil. That doesn't work with Jesus. That work with Muhammad. Even Muhammad, he says, uh, if you ask Allah 100 times for paradise, Allah will give you paradise. Like, what the heck is that? That's it. Or as you said to me, you touch the black stone and Allah erase your sin. How easy it is. Is it right to erase the sin of a, of a man because he's a touch a stone? What if he's a filthy criminal? And he would do it again. Every year I will go. I will kill all people around me. I will, I will rape women. I will steal. I will do drugs. And then I go to the black stone, touch it. My sin is gone. <laughs> Right? Yes, that's not logic. Not only Thank not logic, it's, it's very logic. Can it's, I ask you another question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, can God doing slide the sin of chain? Can what? Can God doing the slide the hand of chain? Can God do chain? Chain? What yes, chain? Maybe what, what, what do you mean chain? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, well, can you open James? James chapter 1 verses 17 is a Bible. Okay. In James 1, in you this say? Bible, James chapter 1 uh, verses 17. Okay. What about this it? This is written here that God cannot change. So the God who is invisible cannot change to Jesus who is visible. That's what, what I think, or maybe you can translate to me. Okay, my friend, my, my, but my friend, yes. God, no, you see, uh, when we talk about God or the nature of God, we are not talking about God. Uh, uh, he is like uh, a concrete. We don't, we don't worship idols. God, our Lord, he don't change. He is eternal. That is the change of his nature as holy. God never change. Human, they do change. I change, you change. Like either we go worse or we go better. But God never change. So here you see, even in the Old Testament, God, he appeared to Abraham as a man. So God did not change. Actually, 
if you go in the in Muhammad, he copy a verse from the from the Bible that God he created Adam in his image. God what created Adam? Let me pull the verse. So when God he created Adam, he created him in his image. And Muhammad, he said the same. Let me show you. And here you see Muhammad is trying to copy from the Old Testament. Read carefully. Allah Prophet, this is Sahih Bukhari, Allah created Adam in his picture. Okay. He created him in his picture. What picture? The Muslims they say to you today, oh, no, 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 no. Allah is saying that he created uh, Adam uh, simply like the way he is. But you don't know the way he is. What the what, what the point of this? If this is what is I mean, the, the way his face is. We, we don't, do you know the face of Adam? Did you see the face of Adam? We did not see it. The verse is coming from the Old Testament that God he created Adam in the image of God, and that is the image of Jesus the Christ. So this is from the beginning. This is not something changed. This is not a change. The image of Adam. Is the image of a Christ for Jesus said clearly I am the Alpha I am the Omega nothing exists nothing exists by but by me you know I'm, uh, everything created by him and for him so Adam when he was created he created by the image of God and this is why your prophet like see my ex your ex prophet now he forbid people from beating a person in his face you can beat him everywhere not face not face why because simply he's stealing that from the Jews for the Jews believe that Adam have the image of God what do you think so you said God never changed but when God Invisible God before Jesus come to the earth, it was invisible. No one can see God, but when come down to earth, born in earth, everyone can see Jesus, can see God. Is, is this a change or not? Uh, this is not a change, my yes. friend. Because the name, but, 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 because this the change is if God he changed the way he judge us, the way he teach us, his ethic, uh, uh, if he uh, you know his existence. But a change of a of a look. This is this is not nothing to do of uh, of uh, of God changing. And yes, as you see from the beginning, God He have created Adam in His image. So there's no change happen. Number one. Number two. Even if that happened, that will not be changed because simply, if God He came to me as a man, yet still He is the same God. He is taking the flesh of a human being, but He is God. God don't change the same as the light you know the light is light it doesn't matter what the color is if you if you the same sun sun uh, uh, come to your room if you put some plastic in your window some like plastic like whatever plastic you will see then you will see inside your room you will see colors right yes okay see color. so when you when you do that when you do this color thing, uh, is it the same sun is coming or this is different sun? It's the same sun. Mm. Right? Right, it's the same. Yeah, but we see more colors now. But did, 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 did any change happen? Nothing changed. It's our ability now it changed to see what the white color contained. It was only white color before. We, didn't, we, we were not able to see what is inside the white color. So if God, he show us more of his power, that is not about God changing. That is about God showing his power, his ability to do what nobody can do.
you know what I mean? Yes, I see, I see. Your, your answer is very logic. I can accept the answer. It's magnificent. You are a genius. But if you're not tired, can I ask you another another question? I told you, and I, I keep my promise, my friend. I am your servant for today. <laughs> you are very great. This is maybe a question that always attacking Christian in my country. There is a Christian too. They are always attacking by Islam. There. Uh, this question is: When God in human form, God becoming weak. It's evident when the human form of Jesus died in the cross. God will be not crucified by human. God is supposed to be almighty, cannot be killed by human. Hmm. Instead, weak and humiliated. It is logic that God cannot refuse his, uh, penyaliban, uh, his crucified. God should be powerful to reject uh, crucify. Hmm. Maybe you have an answer for that? Okay, first of all, let us let us understand what weak means. You are talking about a person who is physically weak, right? Yes. Okay, so, uh, and then we are speaking about Jesus being killed, correct? Correct. Okay, so let us think about it. Jesus, the weak, his weakness was because of he is inside of a flesh of a human being, correct? The flesh of a human yes, get weak. Correct. But isn't it the same Jesus, the weak, is the same one who came back from death? I don't know. Well, he is. He came. Me? It's why we are Christian. We believe in his resurrection, right? So, yes. his weakness, because simply Jesus said, nobody can take myself from me, but I lay down myself. So, Jesus humbly, he is accepting the weakness and the death even, so he can show us that even death cannot take me, even grave cannot contain me, even the devil cannot destroy me, even the evil of death, of killing me, will not stop me from coming back to you. So look what Jesus did. Amazingly, the weakness of the man, which we are talking about, became a strength when it is come to Jesus. He proved to us that he is God, even in the flesh. Because many people like you refusing Jesus, why? Because of the flesh and the weakness, right? So Jesus, he yes. just showed us actually, because this will be a problem later. If Jesus did not come, if okay, Jesus come as a man, and then Jesus the man, yet he cannot do what Jesus the God can do. So he was, he, he was killed, and that's it. It's over. No. The weakness in the flesh, just because the one who is in the flesh is God, became a strength in our eyes. That became a miracle. So we say how he was resurrected. How he came back to life. So the weakness, my friend, it was additional proof that God is a glory Jesus with the weakness of a man, yet he was not tempted by women. He have a flesh of a man, correct? Correct. Okay, the flesh of a man, it's mean he have very, uh, all the needs of the man. So money, women, uh, food, I mean, all of those things will tempt a man. But Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he was holy. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he overcome death. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he made the blind see. Jesus in the flesh of the man, he walked in the water. Jesus in the flesh of the man, he made the one who cannot walk, walk. Jesus in the flesh of the man, he resurrected the dead from the death. So how that can stop Jesus from being God? Never stop him from being God. He is in the flesh, yet he can do what God can do. And he did. Did I answer you? Good, good answer. Uh, another question, maybe. Yeah, uh, but is, be, before we, we jump from uh, this one, just. Uh, 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 I'm still confused. Yeah, no problem. But well, you know, before we go to the okay. second answer, I want you to focus with me, please, and imagine always when you want to understand the Messiah, close your eyes and imagine we have a, a, in the front of us right now the Messiah. 
I wish I can see him. I wish. And imagine now we have a blind man. Let us say I'm sitting in my window here, and then there is a person, his name is the Messiah, and there is a blind man he cannot see. And next to the blind man, there's a dead man. And next to the dead man, there is a man who cannot walk. And next to the man who cannot walk, there's a woman, she is bleeding. And next to the woman, she is bleeding, there's a sinner. And next to the sinner, there is a, 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 a person who uh, 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 sick with leper. And uh, another the, the person, there's millions of people are sick. And then Jesus, he said to them, heal. And all those people are healed. The one who's dead, he come from the grave. The woman who is bleeding, she is not bleeding no more. The one who is blind, he can see. And the one who cannot walk, he's walking. So the flesh of Jesus, he solved all our weakness. So look at this. The weak Jesus, as many they try to call him, overcome all weakness we have. Our disability, our blindness, our death, our hunger, our he feels thousands of people. So the weakness of Jesus was a superpower, proving to us that God is a glorious no matter how he come to us as a man or as God as he is, it doesn't change anything. So God don't change. For God is almighty, it doesn't matter how and where he is. And that is a clear proof that Jesus is God. For if Jesus is not God, he will not be able to do what those things he did. That will be weakness. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand you. God is almighty. Yes, yes it's logic, logic what you have said to me. He do my miracle. But I can still accept this uh, Jesus is born, isn't it? Is uh, die in the cross. Human are God creation, human experience birth and death. Jesus experience birth and death. This means Jesus is God creation too. Uh, I want to ask a question. Is Jesus God creation or Jesus or... My, my friend, yes, my friend. Okay. okay, let us let us think about it this way. Jesus is not a creation of God for he is God. What Jesus is, is God in the flesh. Simply, the flesh is a creation of God. But the Messiah is God himself. So when we say, okay, uh, the flesh, the flesh of a man is a flesh. That is a creation of God. So God himself is exist. If, if I say to you now, I, I, I will help you. You should ask me, okay, well, before Jesus became the Messiah, the man, where he was? Shouldn't you ask me this question? And that will solve the problem. What do you think? Mm. That was the question. Is the place of Jesus is God or no? Yeah, but be before before we know, okay, because if God is exist before the birth of Jesus, so Jesus should be exist before the birth of Jesus, correct? Correct. Okay. Did Jesus say that? Yes. If you go to John chapter 8 and you read, you will see that Jesus, he said clearly, before Abraham, I am. Before Abraham, I am. Let me play the sound for you so everybody can hear it. And I will try to pray, not all the things, so to make it short. John 8. Let us move a little bit here. World, what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing what your father did. They said to him, We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, he would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. Do you hear me, my friend, or you don't hear? And the father of lies. Yes, I but hear you. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. 
Which one of you convicts me so of sin? If I tell the death? truth, why do you not believe me? Uh, I, uh, I mean, I mean, do you? God hears I mean, do you hear the Bible? I'm playing the Bible. Do you hear it or you don't hear it? Oh no, uh, I uh, only see. Ah, you don't hear it. Okay, okay. Seats. All right. Okay, it's let me only... let me let me do this then. Give me a second, please. Okay, sorry for that. The words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. All right. Did Jesus say before Abraham I am, my friend? Did you hear it? Yes, yes okay. I hear it. Okay, so the existence of Jesus have nothing to do with the existence of the flesh of the man. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. So he is exists before Abraham. And even the Jews, they said to him, what are you talking about? You are not 50 years old. How you can be exist before Abraham? This is this is this is crazy. He is he's, he's young, and there is what a thousand of years before between you and uh, and, and and Abraham, well, hundreds of years. So how you can be exist before Abraham? He says, "The truly, truly, I say to you that Abraham not only I exist before before Abraham I am, and he rejoiced my days. He saw me. So before Abraham he was exist. Who was before Abraham? It was Adam, Noah. Before Adam he was exist. So the existence of my friend of the Messiah have nothing to do with his birth. And the Messiah, he confirmed that. And here, by the way, you will see an answer for something you said to me before. Because he said, the one who follow my words. Correct? All right. All right. So the one who follow my words, the one who do my teaching is the one who will be saved. Not the one who says Shahada. Did you notice? Yes. Because nice. many Muslims they lie about Christianity. They say, "Oh, Christian believe that because they believe in Jesus, they can go uh, uh, sleep around, fornicate, uh, kill, do drugs, sell drugs, uh, do prostitution, and that's it. Jesus he saved them. That's absolutely a lie. The one who do follow my words, my teaching, will never." see death what death we're talking about this is that the, the there's the, the eternal life and there's hell so when you follow jesus you will never see death and he's not talking about the death we will have now this is about the eternal life so everything jesus speak of is a proving that he is god and his existence have nothing to do with his birth so before abraham he was before mary he was exist he was exist are you getting my point? Yes, I get you the point. So Mary is the mother of Jesus by birth, but Jesus is exist before Mary. He just took the flesh of a, of a human being because the Messiah are waiting for the Messiah to be born of the Jews. As simple as that. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your explanation. It's... In Indonesia, it's luar biasa. It's very, very good. But the last question, maybe I want to know uh, about Christianity. In Islam, we 
to enter Islam, we say sahada in Christianity, the first we do accept when Jesus Christ as a savior, believing him in the cross. And then the next after that, what should I do uh, every Monday to every Sunday to... Well, first, first, uh, let me let me see. Do you do you accept the Messiah as your savior? Then we can talk about what is next. Do you accept him as your savior? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Why you don't know? I mean, do you have a better name to follow? Do you have a better holiness to follow? Do you have a better ethic to learn from? Do you have a better wise person to listen to? Do you have a, 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 a glorious uh, uh, name that is better his name? There? So there's no, there's no other, uh, so it's up to you. But for me, I take, a, you know, take the opportunity and invite you to accept the Messiah as your savior. And if you accept, then we will talk about what we would do next. For me, I believe that you see your soul, it might be taken from you any second, my friend. You and me, we never know. I might not finish even my sentence. Do we agree? We it's can, we can not die. Easy. As I say before, it's not easy for me to change my religion. I'm not asking uh, you to change your religion. No, 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 I, I, you know, the religion is gone already. You, 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 you left Islam, what religion? You left Islam, didn't you? I don't know. I am an agnostic, maybe. No, no. You time. said, you, you, I, my I friend, I want to learn my friend, uh, my friend. You said, but you said, I'm, you said, huh? I am out of Islam. I left Islam. Islam is not logical. I'm out of Islam. You said that already, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So you are out of Islam. So changing religion is not, is not going to be a matter now. I'm not asking you to change religion. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is God. Religion is the man made the created. God is not a created by man. So I'm asking you to follow the true God, the Messiah. His holiness is amazing. And he proved what he say. What is missing in the Messiah to be God? You know, when somebody says that God, Allah, supposedly, he gave the Messiah all those miracles, but obviously those miracles made us believe that he's God, not the opposite. So Allah, if he is God, he's stupid. Because if you did not make the Messiah able to make the dead come back from life, I will not. Believe is God. If you cannot make the, the heal the sick, heal the blind, heal the, the one who cannot walk, I will not believe his God. If you cannot read my mind, I will not believe his God. So all those things Jesus he have made me believe that he is God. And actually he confirmed that by his own statement. So what is making you wait to accept the Messiah as your Lord after you already you left Islam? You know, you told me you left Islam maybe 40 minutes ago already. We agree about that. <laughs> I just want to know, uh, people come to Islam because uh, how to worship God is more better. Some, some say Islam is more better in how? doing. Okay, explain to me. I'm listening. Here we go. How it's better to how how it's more better to worship God in Islam? It, uh, how I learn from it? Five time prayer in other religion. There is no five time prayer. Uh, before prayer, you have to clean yourself doing a wudu. Hmm. Uh, uh, so uh, I want to know. No, first, first of all, first of all, this is all. This is God. all is copied from other belief, including the Jews. The Jews, they are they, they are people. They have to be clean before they pray. They have to be pure. Secondly, who said they don't pray five and even more times? Jesus said, if you want to pray, the Islam teach you to be hypocrite, because Islam. When you want to pray, everybody will know. But most times they open the windows, they will go to the mosque, they dress certain certain way, and then all of this to show that they are praying. Look what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six, verse number five. And when you pray, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Why the hypocrite? How, how the hypocrite they pray? Listen carefully. Muhammad, Jesus, the Messiah, now is speaking about Muhammad specifically, which is resembling the Jews. And when you pray, you shall not pray like the hypocrite. Are they for their love the pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street? This is what Muslims they do. That they might be seen. Verily I say unto you, they have their own reward. So the Messiah is saying that the one who stands in the corner, so they know, you know why the corner? So people they can see you from two streets. You know what I mean? The corner is, yeah, because you want everybody to see, I am a believer. This is what the Muslims do. So Islam prayer is a is a prayer of hypocrisy. First of all, you are repeating a prayer. You don't even praying. 
you are reciting Quran but where is your prayer you don't have one yeah. the Messiah said be a person who go to his closet close your door and pray to your father in your closet your closet here is your private room you know the closed doors place so we Christians we pray and even we pray more way more than Muslims and not only five times we pray a hundred of times each time I, you know a Christian if he if he, he feel he feel like he want to communicate with the Lord he's welcome to do so so saying you can you have to call Allah certain time in certain uh, 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 like timing in the day repeating the same word is the most stupid thing and then uh, you know I, I want you to to uh, forgive me please I'm not trying to make fun but I will I will I will do Zach and Naik now Zach and Naik he called Allah five times a day Allah he left up the handphone he did not even answer بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كنابد ويا كنابدين هذه نتنا غدا متكين تنادى لن يوم بديان يوم 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 بم بم that's it okay now after three hours I call again تردن 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 الله left the phone he didn't even talk بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم I mean what is that five times a day if even if you have a son is calling you five times a day saying the same stupid word you will change your phone number so this is not a prayer even muslims agree that this is an obligation correct correct okay as long as it's an obligation it is not a prayer because prayer should not be an obligation it should be something coming from your heart you pray to the Lord for your love too, not because you have to. So the Messiah, he teach us that you pray to the Lord in your private, from your heart, when you want, as you wish. Secondly, about cleaning yourself before you pray. Well, let us see how Muhammad, he clean himself before he pray. Shall we? Muhammad, he takes shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. And then he prayed to Allah. Do you know that? Yes, I know. Okay. So what Muhammad taught you about cleaning yourself is a garbage. For himself, he was taking wudu with women of blood from period. At that time, women, they have fabric. You know, actually not long time ago, women, they used to do that. And they put it in their private part when they have their period and then they throw it away after some time they wash it many times and then it became so uh, bad uh, the smell is so disgusting and then when they have their last menstruation they throw it it's not used no more and they throw it in the in, in, in that water so what Muhammad he do he take perform wudu. Do, do you see do you see the hadith in front of you on the screen yes I see okay do you perform wudu? from the well into which the body of dogs menstrual rags and garbage are thrown he said water is a pure and not made pure and pure by anything so this is the ethic of muhammad he taught you to be pure look what jesus said and you tell me which one is logical jesus said it's what come from your mouth make you dirty not what come what go inside your mouth which one is more logical for you can i see the hadith it uh, sahih or oh we can uh, show hasan, it to you in many form uh, here it says uh, here here it says hassan but let me show you the other ones no problem uh, yeah no i will show you no i will show you it, it, that, okay no problem here we go you see oh i'll show you many hadith as many as you wish here we go this, does it say sahih Do you see it? It says Sahih, right? Sahih, right? It is Sahih. Yeah, it's yes, Sahih. Sahih. And look, here the Hay is saying, I heard the people ask the Prophet of Allah, water is brought to you from the well of Bida'ah. Is it in that well which dead dogs, menstrual clothes, and excrement of people are thrown in? The, the Prophet replied, saying, water is pure and nothing 
be filled by anything so you are not praying to you know here we go your your best example Muhammad he was showering with do dead dogs blood women blood from period how that can make him clean so the idea my friend of a cleanliness in Islam is a stupid idea for Islam Muhammad never was a clean Muhammad was full of lies and again it is not okay if I am a homeless person I have my beard became so long, my hair is so dirty, my clothes is so stinky, I smell like garbage from a mile away. But I never hurt a human being. I believe in God. I pray to God in my heart. And there's a person who pray to Allah five times a day. He's so clean, he has perfume. But he pray hoping for the death of others. Oh Allah, kill the Christians and the Jews. Oh Allah, destroy China. Oh Allah, kill the Hindus. Oh Allah, which one is better? The homeless, the dirty, who never harm, never wish death to others, who pray to God for everybody, or the one who is so clean, he have perfume, he drive Mercedes Benz, but when he go inside the mall, he start cursing and calling each nations who don't believe in Islam to be killed which one for you is more uh, clean Christian so why we are saying that Islam teach better way to pray that's not true yeah that's not true it's just my opinion <laughs> yeah what else uh, are there rule in Christianity that we, before we pray we must take a bath or clean uh, physically you know, when my we friend pray, my friend the, the Old Testament you can go out. right now you can go uh, go in the old uh, in the old, uh, right now go to Google search the Bible verses about cleaning yourself you will find in this so there's this is not a question the Jews are very very conservative when it's done to cleaning nobody nobody the jews even actually if somebody they want to go to a restaurant orthodox jews you have to bring them the dish inside the dish why because if you are touching the dish they will you will eat and they will not accept it so the waiter because he is not a jew like them he have to touch the dish from outside and this is their own understanding but jesus he confirmed that they are wrong in this because it's not what come in your mouth will make you dirty it will go out from your mouth so there is there is teaching about cleaning your body and God he don't care really for a cleaning unless it is just for your health otherwise God he don't care really how clean you are because it doesn't matter how we clean yourself you are dirty but let me make it simple for you if I go to the shower right now and I shower myself for 10 hours and come back am I really clean no because inside me there is food and there is uh, poo poo <laughs> correct <laughs> okay, so I'm not a clean really. So what that what the, what that difference will make to God? I will never be clean. Nothing can make me clean. The only cleaning can make a difference for God is my heart. <clears throat> yes, I see. That, that's good of Christianity. Yeah. So so you being a clean is is uh, like is, is somebody lying to himself that I am a clean. You are not. What God cares for is your fruit. That's why Jesus said, from their fruits, you know them, not from their smell. <laughs> you know? So, yes. the smell does not make any difference. You can smell whatever you are. And, you know, for sure, we, uh, actually, uh, Muhammad, he, as you see, he showered himself with dogs, and that, 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 uh, uh, dogs and women blood from period. Uh, uh, Christians, like, do you see Christians around you, they are stinky? <laughs> no. I mean, what does that mean? Muhammad, he used to clean his ass by three rocks. And this is not a clean. <laughs> we can show the hadith right now, you know. Where is the cleaning? <laughs> so when they clean, you know, it's claiming that I am a cleaner than others. First, this is this is very disgusting uh, supremacy. You think you are better than others. For me, it doesn't matter really if a Muslim, he did not take a shower for a year or he take a shower every day. That will not make him a good person for me. What makes him a good person is how much loving, how much giving, how much peaceful, how much unharmful he is. Not about how much shower he take. The shower is his, his personal life. This is for his health. But his behavior is going to affect me, not his shower. 
So in Christianity, when woman in her period, they can pray too. You can pray in any way. I mean, you're, you're God, the God who created you. The sky is open for us always. There's no timing. There's no place. You can pray to the Lord any time you want. You know, I, I remember, I remember a Muslim. He said, to, uh, he called the Sheikh in the TV. He said to him, "Can I take the Quran with me to the bathroom?" The Sheikh he said, "Auzu billah, auzu billah. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. Like, what happened, man? What happened? As, as if the guy who commit a crime." So what if it's in the bathroom? Bathroom these days actually they are cleaner than the, than the saloon of, of, of your prophet in the old days. Our bathroom now they are shiny. They smell so good. What are you talking? So what the problem? And then he said to him, "Okay, I cannot take the Quran uh, with me uh, to the bathroom because this is not right. So what about my head? I recited many verses of the Quran in my head. Should I leave my head outside?" This is the stupidity of this cult. They focus in stuff which is uh, silly and they avoid thinking about the important. The important is, do you pray for good for others or you are praying for evil? Islam focus and praying for evil. You know that the Quran says Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians, correct? <laughs> okay, is that a prayer you pray? I mean, are you going to be proud? Okay, here we go. You take a shower five times a day. Actually, the wudu is not a shower. Still, you are dirty. Because putting some water <laughs> under your arm, some water in your hand, never clean you. I mean, what about the rest of your body? You are still dirty. But let us go with this. Let us say you take the whole shower. But then when you pray to Allah, you recite, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians, and you rejoice for that. I mean, this is the devil. This is the devil. Allah is putting hatred between the Christians and you as a Muslim you will rejoice for the amazing ethic of Allah that he is playing the devil he is the devil who is the one who get the benefit of spreading hatred in any society be honest with me God or the devil devil okay so Jesus said I came to the sick not to the healthy that makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. Let us say Christians are wrong. Let us say they are even sick. Shouldn't God of Islam say, I came to save the sick, those Christians, they need my help? Correct? Yes. This is it what should happen. If, like yeah, if this God is a truthful, he should say, those people are lost. I'm here to help them. This is what Jesus said. I came for the sick, not for the healthy. If somebody believe in the true God, he do not need me. Why I want to come for him? right if some right. imagine somebody have corona and somebody don't have corona and then god he come to the one who don't have corona to save him this is the most stupid cult ever in the top of that no <laughs> not only he will not he will he will not save the one who have corona he will send him corona and that is quran quran virus Muslim, they go inside the mosque, their, their faces are nice, they are relaxed, they come from the mosque, they are like, you know, coming from the grave, angry, upset, they want to kill everybody. Takbir, Allah Akbar. The peace disappear from their face. You listen to Jesus, you relax, you love everybody, you pray for the Muslim, you pray for the Hindus. I never saw one Christian praying for the death of Muslims or Hindus or Buddhas or anyone. We pray. You can go to any church. You will see the church is praying for everybody in the world. That is God, my friend. Yes, the true God like that. Exactly. So why you don't accept the true God, the Messiah? <laughs> I don't know. Why you don't know, my friend? Be brave, be brave. The Lord, the Messiah, is giving you opportunity today using me to talk to you inviting you to accept the messiah so why you are hesitating i am a slow thinker maybe uh, can i ask you another question or i must you will be you will be i i, I made a promise i am your servant for today <laughs> it is uh, in islam there is something say part uh, obligatory or something that uh, you do will be seen if you not do it then you will be rewarded when you do it like salat mm. salat 
when you not do it, you become sin, and if you left it, then you, you will be go to hell like that. Exactly. There's anything in Christianity like that. No, you see, Ma far. you see the Messiah. He said, "From their fruits you shall know them." And what the fruit of the Messiah? Let us make it simple. What the Messiah really he want uh, uh, from us? You as a Muslim, uh, you you learn that there is uh, things which is obligation, and uh, uh, if you do them, those will take you uh, to he to to heaven. The Messiah he don't want you to do things for him. He don't want you. He don't need you. This is God. This is initial proof that the Messiah is God. Okay, what the Messiah he want from us exactly? The Messiah, he said, as an example, if we go to Matthew chapter 25. Let me open the Bible and okay. see together what the Messiah is saying. I want you to listen to this chapter, if you don't mind. It's not really, I mean, uh, it's just to show you what the Messiah really want from us. Because, you know, uh, uh, the obligation which God he won from man is not about him. It's about the man himself, the benefit of the man. God he is. You see, the Messiah, he came. I, I'm saying to you, I'm your servant. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because the, the, my best example is the Messiah. He washed the feet of his followers. Imagine, this person, he is their God. And yet he insists, he told him, if you don't let me wash your feet, you don't belong to me. I don't know you. All right? So the Messiah, he doesn't matter. So what the Messiah he wants from you to make you go to heaven have nothing to do with the teaching of Islam, period. He wants you to be a person who is the fruit of God. And the fruit of God appear in your act and your work by loving others. So I'm going to play the, the gospel for you. Let me do it. And I will okay. uh, I will escape some part of the chapter so to make it short for you. Let us see. Okay. Um, Matthew 25. I'm good and faithful servant which had received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art an hard man, weeping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not stored. And I was afraid, and went, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that as thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not stored. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then in my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. 
Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. I mean, what do you think? This is what the Lord He wants from you. Your prayer doesn't count really unless it is, you know, uh, 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 a person who follows His teaching. What His teaching? I was angry and you feed me. But who is the angry? They said to Him, But when will you feed you? He said, When you do it to somebody, He need food, you do it to me. When you do it to somebody who is sick, you do it to me. When you go to somebody he is in prison, you are doing it to me. So Jesus does not want one from you. He don't. He is God. He do not get any benefit from you. What he wants, the message of Christ is, be loving, giving, be human. Love each other. This is what I want from you. You want to come to my house? You want to be in my kingdom? You have to be qualified. What is the qualification? Feed the hungry. Not me. I'm not hungry. I'm God. Feed the one who is sick, not me. I am a person who live eternal life. I'm God. Visit the one who is in prison. Dress, close the naked. Take in the stranger. If you do it, all those things, you do it to me. So my friend, do you see what Jesus wants from you? Yes. It seems not, nothing like Islam that will become sin if we do, we do not do uh, salat uh, like that God don't don't need anything for me exactly Islam is a religion of because Islam is a stupid uh, uh, ritual religion ritual it's based on ritual so, so there is no haram like like in Muslim there is oh, I think pig is haram in Islam there is any in Christianity food that becomes my, my, I just told you the haram the haram is not the food going inside your mouth it's your heart thinking bad acting bad doing bad, the rest will not make you good in the old testament it's forbidden for a person to eat pork as an example but this is the reason because pigs they this is for health reason this is not about god for health reason until now actually even science proved that pork is not really healthy because if you eat too much of it you know there's animals who because there's some animals they they don't uh, sweat right this is one of the reasons but in the time of uh, uh, of the jews pigs they grow and they eat whatever they want they, they are not like now and they are in farms we know exactly what they are eating so at that time they eat even dead bodies dead animals and they can bring diseases like now here we go the chinese they start eating pat and look what happened right so uh, there's there's animals but but this is not only for pigs we have to be uh, uh, honest too i mean there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a the, the mad cow disease there's a flu disease the, the bird flu disease but when it's come to the pig <clears throat> the pig can be uh, a, like an animal because it's eat whatever it is dead it can be dangerous unless you are monitoring this pig and you are farming him which means he have a fence and then inside the fence he eat then you know what he's eating but he might be a, 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 a he ate a man a human you don't want to eat a, an animal eating a human right so there is a reason for not to eat that but not because it have to do with god <laughs> god you know all those command is for your benefit not for the benefit of god as an example even sabbath you know that the jews are forbidden to work in sabbath right right okay but jesus he uh, uh, he taught the jews that Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. And look how amazing this statement is. When I when when Jesus said 
the Sabbath was made for the man. That means God, he don't want even the Sabbath is not for him. He don't care really for the Sabbath you are. Making it a big deal that because you are, you are obeying my command now not to work in Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for you because you are greedy. You don't want to take a vacation. You force your servant to work seven, seven days a week. You never give them a break. So Sabbath was made for you, not for me. God do not need Sabbath. You know, so when the Messiah in Mark chapter 2, verse number 20, 27, he said, Sabbath was made for the man, not man made for the Sabbath. That is a clear understanding of the teaching of Christ. That all the command of God was for our benefit, not for his. He do not need anything. You know what I mean? Yes. And that including food, practice, prayer, is for your benefit, not for me. I got nothing from it. If you pray to me, what I got? Nothing. I am God anyway. You know what I mean? Yes. So Just to make sure, if I don't go to the church on Sunday, it will not become sin. But no, no, I've it's not sin. No, no, you don't even... Right? No, it's better to go to... It, for us, the church, it, like we, we, we join the family, uh, the Christian family, I mean here, because now we will have bigger family. Uh, you learn more about the gospel. There is people who they are teaching you, etc. But it's not what make you Christian is going to the church, is acting as one. You know what I mean? So, so do, go that, that don't become sin if I don't go to the no, church. No, no, no. That, that that will not make you sin. Who who said so? Nobody. No, this is not true. You know, church. The church in Christianity is not a building. Church is us. Me and you now, we are a church. If you are if you are a Christian now, and we are speaking about Jesus, that is a church. Jesus and Messiah said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them, which means I will be the third. Proving that he is God again. They say to you, where Jesus is, I'm God. How every two mention my name, I will be between them. So the church is not a building like Muslims. The church is believers. So you... A brother of yours sit together talk about the gospel of Jesus the Christ the Lord your Savior that is a church I see, I see. what else do you have any more Okay, the conversation was very fun. I'm pleased. Thank you, CP. But I'm sorry, I can convert now. I am not one of those who can learn quickly. So give me some time. No, I no. I don't want you to convert. Today. You see, you got me wrong. I, I don't want you to convert. You see? Yeah, yeah. I, but I'm, I hope you can continue conversation later. Yeah, Would no problem. Please? No problem. But I don't want you to convert. Finally, I don't want you to convert. I was asking you to accept the Messiah as your Savior. This is not convert. You know, we don't believe in this. We believe in relationship with God, not just a change in, I mean, religion. That's not Christianity. We are following the true God, my friend. We are not changing. There's only one God. So, my friend, don't don't accept yes. the Messiah unless you believe. We are not hypocrite. We don't believe in, in Shahada. This is garbage. I want you from your heart to be a believer. Saying things is not convincing for you or accepting things is not fully convincing. Oh, occupying your heart is not right. So don't say it unless you believe it. Okay. So I encourage you not it's to accept the Messiah. I encourage you. I encourage you not to accept the Messiah unless you are fully in your heart became a believer. It's hard to, to accepting no. I want to learn about Christianity first. But finally, I want to ask prayer from everyone. Maybe there is many Christian uh, see this YouTube can pray for me. I heard that some there is some someone has met Jesus. I hope. We lost you. Oh, we lost his voice. <coughs> Are you there? Do you have a bad connection? Hello?
Hello. All right. We heard him saying that you know he hoped that we will pray for him. So I encourage yeah, reading. If you please. Yeah, we lost you again. Can you go again? Because you were saying you uh, you saw somebody saw Jesus. From there, we lost you. We lost your voice after mm. after you said somebody saw oh, Jesus. My, sorry, my connection is bad. It's okay. So you said you want us okay. to pray for you. Wait, wait a second. I need. Oh, my connection is lost. Okay, can you hear now? Yeah, I hear you. So you said you want the, you, you wish the Christian to pray for you. What else you want to say? Yes. Uh -huh. Pray for me. Is it okay? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Pray I, for I, me that I can meet Jesus. Uh, that I can meet Jesus, uh, so I can accept Jesus as my savior. And yes, I want to say thanks, and I hope you don't mind if I call you later and sure, sure, chat man. with you again, CP. Sure, I welcome any time to call me or friend. May the Lord bless you. I pray to the Lord in front of everybody. I pray to the Lord, to the Savior, the Messiah, His glory, His holiness, to touch this man and to make him accept him, to open the doors of heaven to him and his family and his people. We love all the Indonesian people, not only him. All of you be loved by the Messiah. The Lord said, that the Father, for He loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son to save them, not to because He hated them, because He loved them. So the reason for the Messiah to come, only because He loves us. There is no other need for Him. He do not need us. We need Him. So my friend, I pray. I pray that your needs will be answered. Your request will be done. I pray that the Lord, He hear your voice. Lord, our Messiah, our Savior, save this person. Give him the light and make him see what he could not see by my explanation. Amen. I am your servant, Lord. I could maybe do could not do it, but you can do it better than me for sure. And the Lord may he open your eyes. Thank you so much, Sophie. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> We don't want anyone to believe unless you are a believer. Because simply, if you practice such a thing, you are not a believer. You cannot fool the Lord. You can say, oh, I believe. If you are not in your heart a believer, you are not. This is a Christ. This is not Muhammad, who don't care, really. Just say Shahada, and that's it. This is the Messiah. Nobody can play with him. He can read your mind. He can read your heart. The God of Islam, he care, he care only for numbers. Just say Shahada. It doesn't matter really you believe or not. And the Quran even saying that clearly. With a clear sentence, imagine how filthy this God is, the devil. Just accept me. It doesn't matter. Accept me by your lips. Don't believe in me. You cannot do that to the Messiah. You have to be a true believer. This is why he said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord. <clears throat> Chapter 94. Verse number 14 explain the cult of Islam very well. The desert Arab, they say, We believe, say you have no faith. But you only say, We submitted to Allah. Actually, not all submitted. We became Muslims, Aslamna. So what, what? They became Muslims. Allah saying to them, Don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. How you can describe them Muslims if they don't have faith? For not yet faith has entered your heart. So how they became Muslim? He forced them by the sword. Imagine this God is saying, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. 
And you can't change the translation if you don't like this one. You cannot do that with the Christ. The Bedouin say, we believe, say, you believe not. So how they are. And then he said to them, only say, you can say, Allah is correcting them. Don't say we are a believer, say we are Muslims. Do you see it? Have you ever heard of a garbage like this garbage? Have you? This is the container of the garbage of Islam, the Quran. Don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. He don't care. In Christianity, with the Christ, you cannot do that. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you cannot say I'm a Christian. You cannot say I'm a believer. You cannot say anything, for you are false. And Jesus will say to you, go away, stay away from me. I don't know you. Go to hell. So we cannot really compare. Comparing between the teaching of the Messiah and the teaching of Allah, Aka Muhammad, is like comparing between the faith of the devil and the holiness of God. It's an insult to Christ to compare him to this garbage. And we seek forgiveness from the Lord for even mentioning his name while we are talking about this garbage in front of us. But I'm sure he will understand. Our purpose is to save the Muslims, not to glorify the devil. The devil is not our target. So I would like to see The Christian family here, pray for our brother here, the one who called me, we spend the time with him tonight or today. Please pray for him, that the Lord will open his eyes. Pray for, pray for his health. He accept Jesus or not, pray for him. Pray for his health. Pray for him to be loving, to be given, and pray for him to be saved, which is the most important thing. Pray for those who need your prayer, my friend, whoever that is. At least I'm happy that we were able to help him to leave Islam for today. And this is the first step. You see, before you install a new software, clean software, you have to destroy the virus. Installing a software in the top of a virus, the virus is there. At least now we cleaned his heart from the virus of Muhammad, from coronavirus. The coronavirus is very dangerous and now today he is free from it. I misinterpret. Okay, well, correct me. You see, when somebody says you misinterpret the Quran, uh, prove me wrong. <laughs> I mean, talk is cheap. We open the phone for you, Muslims. Keep saying, who want to call me? And then a Muslim, the only Muslim called me, he said to me, Yahu. And then we have the second Muslim who left Islam. We received two calls from two Muslims. One, he said to me, Meow, and this is Muslim night, maybe. He's a knight there, he is a cat here. And then the second person called me, he left Islam. So instead of calling me, saying, Meow, what about you prove me wrong? Meow, you became a cat. Anyway, guys, I really I get tired. I'm here for many hours. Uh, we are happy for our friend that he is out of Islam, and we will be happier if God God is willing, He help him to open his eyes and He call us again, when, whatever He think it's time for him to to accept the Messiah to to announce that He accept him. Or if you have more questions, I will be happy really to take him and uh, do my best. And uh, as I said, I got no benefit from you becoming a Christian or not. I'm here just to help you, not to help me. I got no benefit. I don't know you, you do not know me. I don't know any one of you. 
I receive no glory. Nobody can say Christian prince, he did this because he was a Christian prince. No one. No one. Time will come and this person, his name is a Christian prince, will die. And none of you know even where my grave is located. For you do not know my name. Nothing come to me. It's all about you. We are serving the Lord. And the Lord, he says, you serve me by serving people. I was hungry and you fed me. I was sick and you came to me. I was a prisoner and you visited me. I was naked and you closed me. And Lord, when we did that, he said, you did it when you did it to my people. Those are my brothers, all the human, all those are my creation. They are my children. This is how you can serve the Lord. And the Lord, the glory will shine through your faces and your act. Be holy as your father, Jesus said. And being holy is not by taking a shower. By the act of holiness. Thank you all for being here. I will try to come again at night if I can. Which means a couple of hours from now if I can get rest in a rest. If not, tomorrow at the same time we will be here again and invite your friends. Uh, Again, uh, please pray for this uh, gentleman who left Islam today. Uh, he is struggling, he can tell. And he did his best actually to prove me wrong or let us say to, to, fog, to, to stay in his, uh, you know, he's trying, he's resisting. I can't tell he's resisting. But uh, slowly, slowly he gave up and he agreed that this cult cannot be good, cannot be from God. And that is exactly the first step to come close to God is to dump our sin away, our garbage away. And then we will see how we come clean. And the second we become clean, the cloud will go away and we will see the beautiful sun. We will see that the sky is blue. The Lord, he will open the eyes of those who need it if they are asking from their heart. And I pray that today he will pray himself too Pray to the Lord to open his eyes. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. Christ is our Savior, is our Lord, and Islam is nothing but false, fraud, and cult. And all cults have one source. It is the devil who is the father of all lies. Thank you, and God bless you.